hey. Hey. Being recorded. Got it. Get out of my way. There we go. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to yet another goddamn horror podcast. I am one of your hosts. I am Ryan Danley coming to you from a cold and drizzly dark night in Portland, Oregon. I forgot where I lived for a hot second. Um, <laughs> um, Jonas, how's it going over there in uh, Brooklyn? Straight up rainstorm, buddy. Aside from that, we're we're good. It was just, just a rainstorm. Yeah. yeah. Same over um, this part of Brooklyn. Yeah. 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 We're, so we're all rainy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rainy wow, right this, is yeah. this is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing podcasting right now. This is <laughs> it's like, is this what the, what the what is going on? This has never happened. No. I don't think that all three of our weathers have synced up like that before. Yeah, so so we're like, um, okay. Right, Rain. Done. So let's yeah. just let's just skip this whole warm up the crowd part. Let's yeah. we're, hey crowd, are you warmed up with the yeah. with this riveting content? Avery, um, said, Avery said we're good, so like, don't worry about it. We're good. <laughs> Um, well, I would, let's just inter- introduce our amazing guests. Can we do that? Fuck yeah, absolutely. Please. Yes, we should. Oh boy. With a, uh, with a IMDB list filmography list, as long as my arm, um, that has included all of our favorite things, American horror story, um, Buffy, B- Buffy, the vampire slayer. Um, there's some, uh, as there's some law and order stuff in there, I think I, nightmare, I, I, cinema. nightmare cinema, um, fight club, um, uh, Halloween, uh, uh, the list goes on and on. And, uh, in one of our favorite movies of last year that we've re- uh, reviewed pretty heavily, which was Brooklyn 45. Can we please welcome to the show Ezra Buzzington? All right. All right. Now settle down everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I appreciate y'all. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, good to be here. Very happy, and I wish you would. Well, yeah, okay. Well, okay. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> the, title, the title of your show is just like I was gonna maybe tell my mom had she been alive that I was gonna be doing this, but it's like I couldn't say that to her; she'd freak out. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, um, it's uh, it's um, you know, we 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 started it off actually. The first episode was called another fucking horror podcast yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But oddly somebody had taken that, that. Like that. somebody <laughs> had used it somebody <laughs> had used it so we oh, um, no, seriously. yeah there was another podcast using it so we had to d- default to uh another goddamn and i think in the long run that ended up being better for us you know what yeah, I mean? probably. Yeah. it flows it flows it's a good flowing title so it, the, it, who took motherfucker was, was it like a far right kind of or no, it was just another <laughs> mother. It was just another fucking horror podcast. It was actually, <laughs> I think it was. I think I, I don't know if they're still around. I should check in on them. Um, they. Um, it was a, a female run horror podcast, and oh, uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and uh, we didn't want to go to battle over them, so we we changed it up. Yeah, and, I uh, bet not. Yeah, and um, yeah, and now we're we were gonna like invite her onto the show and be like, listen, we like we fucked up and try like almost stole your name, so like, come on, let's talk. Like, yeah, yeah, let's right. do it. Right. Let's push your another fucking horror podcast. Like, let's do exactly. it. Exactly. Um, we should still do that. We should. Um, we're we're still do it. I, don't, I don't know if she's doing podcasts anymore. I, right. good. I was like, shit, we could have taken the name. Fuck. I'll right. call her. And <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. we'll <laughs> I'm now working for y'all. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I hope you take a check. Um, <laughs> sure. So, um, <laughs> that I can then wash, change the amount of, and take it to the bank. <laughs> yeah. Know. How about it? How about it? Make it as I, much as you want. No, thank you. Unemployment's out, man. So, um, <laughs> So you have been doing this thing for a, a while. Um, One hundred and thirty-five you... years. That's good. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> that's uh, your I am doing Nosferatu. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your. I first... would love to play that part. Jesus. <laughs> you got your. You got your first um, IMDb in nineteen ninety-three. Um, so that's uh, again, you know, so people who were born that year are in their. <laughs> 30s and, <laughs> and, like have families and run businesses and stuff um so what 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 ha- what happens what what do you say to yourself like so you come from theater right before yeah my background is in theater my grandfather was in vaudeville that's where i get my name mm-hmm. oh. uh he played the midwestern primarily the midwestern circuits a circuit like chicago uh, nashville tennessee indianapolis and he was in new york and la a couple of times I actually have a picture, I think it's probably on my Facebook or fucking something, um, of his name misspelled, of course, on the marquee downtown Los Angeles, mm-hmm. like 1928, 
something wow, like that. Very cool. Um, Ezra Buzzington and the Hoosier Hot Shots. And he would, he would, when vaudeville was dying, he was the opening act for films. That's what they all started doing until everything just petered out and completely died. Um, so that's where I get it. So I have a, a, a family legacy of show business all failed. So <laughs> as I'm holding up that tradition, <laughs> you're like, I'm just going to just keep on the, uh, uh, on the situation because, um, why not? What else? I mean, seriously, like, like being a failed vaudevillian is way cooler than being a successful, almost anything else. So I, like, I, tend to agree. Honestly, I really do tend to agree. And it's a choice that many younger performers have to make early on. I remember when I was in New York City handing out flyers in the middle of dead of winter outside Bloomingdale's. I mean, it was fucking cold. And right. she, she, you're here, go up to this hair salon place and you're in a hair palace, go up there, eh, right. five dollars off, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sincere and I'm good at what I do. So it's like, boom, boom, boom. And the, actually the owners, after like two months, the owners of that place offered me the opportunity to go to school to learn how learn any trade frankly but learn how to crank hair and make uh, blah 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 and i thought about it and i went no no thanks i appreciate that i really really do but i don't want to learn anything that i'll be able to to fall back on right <laughs> i don't because i would i'm a lazy sure. motherfucker right you know, so i would tell, sure. oh i got a bill i gotta go and do this so i in uh, vividly remember thanking them but but telling them no and they were astounded it was like mm, no i gotta do this other thing and it's obviously taking like 50 years to get there but still whatever it's been fun <laughs> sure <laughs> so you no know, it's great and so you've you're how, how would we describe it are you would you call yourself a character actor would you call yourself a what would you how would you describe your run through through the acting um situation? definitely character actor but but i i like to think of myself honestly as like a chameleon actor sure who sure. can can and i've gotten better at it over the years early on it was tough but i've gotten better at it where you literally morph into something other sure. makeup helps with that a lot like with the horror films i've done that just totally. like that really helped that does it does all the work for you really sure um uh but other characters too it's like let it morph into you let you don't fight it turn into something that is a part of you but is not who you are and there's if it's a, 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 an escape or what but it's, sure. it's definitely a place to be an experience that i wouldn't experience otherwise and i it's kind of like working on location i wouldn't go to morocco unless i got a fucking movie you sure know, that, that, mm -hmm. that's a perk sure and actually playing a part <laughs> that is either close or far from me and who i actually am is always its own reward for me um because it's just i don't know I, I, probably any character actor would tell you the same thing they just like sure. to turn into someone else now whether they're doing it out of escaping from who they are which is definitely a category of character actors or somebody who just wants to examine uh spiritual psychological emotional worlds that don't belong to them mm -hmm. which is kind of more where i land um it's it's rewarding either way so yes it's, character actor is definitely the the catch-all phrase sure it but, seems much more like a like sort of just research for feelings almost like yeah. as well as you can get into somebody else's head like that's what and, and character actors tend to have such a broad mind to be able to do that you know what i mean like like it's got to be really hard for like like i don't, I don't want to name anybody but a, a big higher up in yeah, go ahead so well i'd say like <laughs> ben affleck or tom cruise somebody like that is, mm. you know like where they've tried but like it doesn't feel as right. They're like the movie star playing the role, whereas right. movie star is a category unto itself. Like, yeah. Exactly, well, and you yeah. guys kind of build the film around like the character. Everybody around them is what makes the movie most of the time for me. And I think most of them know that. Yeah, so, yeah. The, I mean, the George Clooney <laughs> and the Brad Pitt and the people who yeah. are more movie stars, they realize that. Because they're honestly, the majority of them, I'd say at least 95%, are really good actors. Sure. But yeah, they, for sure. they went to, or they were packaged into, one of the two, that category that everybody wants to see them for. And yeah. that's fair. I mean, that's very fair. In a way, it's a curse to be a character actor because I'm very, very, very difficult to categorize. Um, and that's not good because more often than not, agents, casting directors, and sometimes directors, especially of commercials, they want to know what they're getting. And I'm often, sure. very often, 
um, uh, 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 sent out for roles as a wild card. It's like, well, if you don't want this kind of guy over here, and you're not sure about that kind of guy, here's a wild card. Boop, there's Ezra Buzzing. See what Ezra can do. <laughs> and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. But knowing that helps, because now when I go into either a self-tape or what used to be live auditions with people, I know I'm the wild card. So right. all I have to do is go in there and basically be whatever it is I'm going to be as whatever character they've created that I can add to. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And you just cannot internalize. It, it's, it's a big mistake to think you did something wrong or you didn't do it right or blah, 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 blah. It's like, quit talking to me over drinks. I don't want to hear about that. It's like, just go in, do your best and go home. The yeah. audition often is the victory. It means your name's in the hat in a crazy fucking business that makes absolutely zero sense especially sure. as far as i could tell from the outside none whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> i want to say i want to say this about the character acting thing too because like i i know me personally when i'm watching a movie and i know when a character actor shows up my reaction to it is like fuck yeah that guy's in this right and it's always like <laughs> but like it's when i say that guy i like i will name some names i'm talking like william forsyth i'm talking yeah. like david morse i'm yeah. talking like like fucking Bokeem Woodbine. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> like these guys that come into a movie where it's like you see them mm. on the cast list and you're like, okay, I already know that I'm probably going to enjoy this movie now because that person is in there. Mm. And I find that a lot of times with character actors because mm. I like what they bring to a part as opposed to like the the turned up to a thousand degree of the character actor which is the method actor which i'm usually not oh. into like i'm like i'm usually not into that but the character actor part of it i fucking love that part so like yeah it's for me it's definitely like a feather in the cap that makes that makes a lot of sense to me um and also what's nice about that is when you see a particular character actor who whose work you uh really like you see them listed you don't know what it is they're going to be doing mm -hmm. it's like they're doing something different Exactly. Well, they're doing the same thing they did before, but in a different way. So it's it's it, with with movie stars, you get pretty much the same freaking thing. All yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, and again, that's fine. It's part of the business. It's one of the, it's like the Coke, the Coca Cola of you sure. know the branding. I'm more like I don't know a Fanta or something. I'm sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. to get him drink this shit. So it's like <laughs> you know, um, or boxed wine, which is my favorite thing to drink. <laughs> sure. Fantastic. It seriously is. Is. I actually, and, and I will enjoy a um, when they let a movie star, Brad Pitt, actually. Oh, he's wonderful. Is a great actor and does yeah. all sorts Monkeys? of different I'm things. Sorry. Yeah, 12 yeah. Monkeys or Snatch. I mean, like, oh, yeah. he, I mean, he's true is, romance. A true romance, <laughs> but, romance. He's, but he's, but right, he is different in a lot of things. And I, so I give him credit for being like, at times when I think about like movie stars and like, and, and like, I love, I love George Clooney and I love, you know, I think he's, he's a great uh, actor, but he's, but he, or, you know, like Sean Connery was always my perfect example of this. Like, you got Sean Connery in a movie and he was just Sean Connery. You know what I mean? Like, and he was, he, he, yeah. and, and which is great because if you needed a Sean Connery, man, he was the best. Of he was the best. <laughs> he, was the, he was the best of being Sean Connery. And so, like, it, you know, so, like, I mean, you had to love it for it, but you never saw him really kind of venture from that. And uh, not even in Zardos, you don't think? I, well, sorry, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> may, may, maybe early on when people had oh, art, uh, really still, good. still art. <laughs> Still art in their heart, you know what I mean. But, that was um, just Sean Connery yeah. with nut huggers on. That's yeah, all that was. <laughs> was the cocaine era. Um, yeah. But it's. I, um, <laughs> but I it's, know nothing about that. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't say that we we're gonna. This is actually an intervention. Uh, no, yeah. but it's. Uh, <laughs> I know what you're saying though. I know exactly what you're saying. So, yeah. so you know, it's great. Um, and we'll talk more about this movie in a little bit because we're gonna talk about. It. But in Brooklyn Forty Five, one of the greatest things, and I think that really we all talked about you is because. Because when I actually looked up who you were, I was like, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> and I didn't almost even recognize you. You pulled a little bit of a, a Gary Oldman or a uh, Tom Hardy, who are oh, very good, oh. um, very good at morphing into they're another character I mean, actor. They're, they're both they got real famous <laughs> they got real yeah, famous yeah, yeah. yeah um you know i mean i mean you look at tom hardy on peaky blinders and you look at him yeah, and so he's like two different human beings and um and so you you like you're talking about like you physically almost train i mean like it's you but like the but the character is so strong in Brooklyn forty five that you like you sort of physically transformed into Yo, it. for sure. You were like like what was amazing to me is that sometimes it's challenging 
to put new people in roles that were supposed to happen a long time ago because you can always i don't know what it is but yeah. you can always sort of tell um that these are 2000s people not 1950s people i don't know i don't know what it is in that scenario but brooklyn 45 in its entirety did a tremendous job of that and specifically you could have been friends with my grandfather you know what I mean? Like I mean, like was, I mean, it was just the way you held your face, and just just your 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 uh, just your refrain, and your and everything about it that you did that, like you know. So so when you're doing these roles, like is it is it something that you study? Is it something that you that you do, or is it just something that's in you naturally that you like? Okay, I'm gonna do this. Well, in general. Uh, not specifically Brooklyn, but in general, um, it always, and every good actor will tell you that it starts with the text. Right. You know, what, whatever is said and not said is what, if you're doing your research, will, and what other characters say about your character, um, will lead you down a path that will will not betray you. Um, because the word is the truth, and it starts with the word on on uh, in film and, and theater as well. It, it, it just begins with the text. And when you have questions, you then talk to the writer or the director or whatever, and you get answers. It's like, ah, oh, now I see why you said it that way. Mm -hmm. you know? If it's good writing. If it's not good writing, uh, that becomes far more challenging because, A, it's hard to memorize. What are you drinking? What is that? Topo Chico. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to say I sold a straight vodka for a second. No, no. no. <laughs> I was so impressed. This would be another goddamn fucking yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way different podcast. It'll be, it'll be that after my third glass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so it does begin with the text. Uh, and, and from then on. Then there is certain... If you're open to it, if the actor is open to it, um, little windows begin to open and you can hear... A kind of voice, a kind of placement, wherever you want it in your throat or in your head or in your nasal cavity or wherever you're going to place it, or higher up or lower down, it it starts to just sort of feel right. And when it feels right, then of course you have to get it past the director and everybody. But more often than not, they're okay with it. Then comes for me um, the physical attributes of a character, um, the difference between, let's say, Weird Al from Ghost World. And uh, 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 my character in Brooklyn is how, I mean, Weird Al had been working all day. He was slouched. He was tired. He didn't want to have a fucking table. This guy is always erect no matter what. Right. Always erect. He's always ready. He was just there. Um, so it begins with a lot of stuff like that. And then you just try to get out of the fucking way, honestly, as, as a human. Sure. It's like, okay, character, please take over now. <laughs> right. And if you've learned your lines and if you memorized it and you've done your homework, then it's it's just it's not as hard as people make it out to be. Um I don't get why people have to work so fucking hard at at anything because no, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's neither is it that hard. So sure. <laughs> you know that old apocryphal story I'm sure you've heard of Dustin Hoffman on the set of Marathon Man with Lawrence Olivier. You know this story? No, I don't. He goes yeah. nodding. All right. Uh, he showed up. He was supposed to be really, really, really tired. I think it was the teeth pulling scene. Maybe I don't remember. But he was supposed to be really, really tired. And he walked in. He was like, he was beat. Dustin Hoffman was like, beat, tired. And there's Sir Lawrence. He's blah, blah, blah. And he's like, are you all right, Dustin? What's up? He goes, what's going on? He goes, oh, I stayed up all night. I ran. And I did this. And I worked so hard. And I sweat. And I drank. And now I'm here and I'm ready. And so let me look at him. Just try acting, dear boy. <laughs> <laughs> just, and it is. It's so much easier just to get the character. You don't have to do, and that's method, right. misused. Right. Method is a good approach. It's a very, very good approach, especially <clears throat> for theater. But it's just been misused. Sure. Um, so did that answer your question? I'm not even sure it did. Did it? Yeah, yeah. no, no, it absolutely. No, it absolutely. Um, no. Yeah. yeah, no, I got I just want to, I just like, you know, when I, when I see that, I'm, I'm, it's just like, it's, it's fascinating to me. And, you know, uh, as a stand up um, comedian, getting out of my own way is also like, you know, so I, I get that, you know, okay. because, because it is, it, there's a lot of, um, 
uh, there's just a, there's a wall that you have to get out there to be completely open and the further you get past that wall the better you are and yeah. the more in the moment you are and the more yeah, like genuine exactly. it is um because when you're up there and it's like the, that first couple of years of comedy years it's, it's it's how good you are is how quick you can kind of like you know i mean like improvisers are notoriously good at like being mm-hmm. out uh, just outside the wall mm-hmm. in there in themselves i mean like when you watch like will ferrell work oh yeah yeah he's just you know he's he can just do it without that uh that shame or that uh you know any of that kind of like <laughs> any of that thing and he can just go and do it and i think that particularly um um with stand-up when you have to be some of yourself and some of a character and Ooh. some of a if there's a there's a lot there's a weird sort of blend of trying to make it all sort of work so i uh, i'm just always like really fascinated when i see people like yourselves who can sort of like morph into those roles like like i, I know that you say it's easy but that's i think it's no it, i don't mean to also, say it's easy you, i, I right. really don't mean to say it's easy I want uh, to- that it's not sure. easy but neither is it hard sure and i get that i think i think the with the depth you, like you are i think you are a true artist and i'll just leave it because oh, i yeah because i think that interesting being, too what the, when you're talking the difference between say stand-up and acting and i'm terrified of doing stand-up i would love <laughs> to but the thought of doing it is like it, shit just starts happening <laughs> Such right. as, like you wouldn't believe right. everything everything starts to sweat everything my Tony. <laughs> right. so my hat is off to y'all for being able to fucking do that there's a difference with acting i'm not playing myself right really not. Sure. you sure. are yeah. a yeah. version a kind of yourself and that's right. far more vulnerable than anything that i ever have to fucking do yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's very similar to to you know music too like I, i'm a musician and like I write personal songs and stuff and I had a band and I can't get on stage to do, to tell jokes, which I, I funny, <laughs> but <laughs> not so far. <laughs> I agree. Frankly, you know, honestly, I'm waiting. <laughs> but I'm also, I'm also band. a singer and musician. So I get that. With a band, you have, you have backup. You have like yeah. a gang behind you too. And that's always been able, that's what got me on stage was, Hmm. camaraderie and like having somebody to back me up nice. nice and and with stand-up and in i guess in acting you probably do have people to to back you up and stuff but stand-up is terrifying to me because that's on you everything yeah that's on you yeah, <laughs> and yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very 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 impressive skill i, I yeah yeah, my hat's off to it, and I think I'd probably be good at it, but I'm I'm not gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I've always I've always also said this about stand up. Like, there's always this ongoing war between imp- improvisers and stand ups and like yeah. stuff like that, where it's just it's it's just a bullshit pissing contest. But kind of. the thing the thing about it is that anytime you see a stand up comic who started off as an improviser and then went into stand up comic, mm-hmm. they're automatically a much better comic stand up comic right off the bat. Hmm. And it's just because they have the command of the stage. They have the stage presence aspect of it. And it's one of those skills that like, if you have it, like if you're a theater kid or if you're an improv comic or if you're a sketch comic or anything like that, before you do stand up, like if I could do improv, I absolutely would have done that shit before I went into stand up. Like hmm. I absolutely would have, it would have made the first couple of years of my stand up so much easier, like just to deal with on stage. But that's not a skill I have. I've tried well, to see, do. see, that makes a lot of sense to me because as I think about it, because I also do improv. I never did like improv classes or anything like that. I just kind of naturally have it, thank God. Sure. Because <laughs> it makes things a lot fucking easier. Because the flop sweat between improv that goes wrong and stand-up that goes wrong are very, very different. So mm-hmm. I think improv actors are more used to failing. Sure. sure. That's just if you jump right into stand up, microphone, you, glass of water, done. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, your stakes are so much higher or are high in a different way. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, I came into a uh, stand up as a writer um and um uh, that's the worst way to go because uh, <laughs> you're like why 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 because it's uh, cuz I wrote great jokes but it's like uh, and they're funny but they're lo- but like long and and I sit at home and I can write a, a I can write 16 pages and I'm like this is the funniest stuff that anybody's ever going to hear and then you go up there and you say it. so how, people are like right. what is he even talking about and you know, 
know what I mean? So like it's it's like really like like writing's great because it's a writing job. I mean, yeah. it is ultimately a writing job, but like, but coming into it with, and everybody always told me right off the bat, like you're one of the best writing standups I know, hmm. but you got to do the, a billion other things to make jokes funny. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it's like, you know, um, uh, so I'm glad that I, I had that coming into it, but it was, but it was, um, uh, it is, it is definitely the, uh, the path of uh, way more, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Struggle. I think ultimately what we're saying is absolutely fucking nothing is easy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, <really not. laughs> exactly. But you no. know, heart goes out to Joey and Joe Coy. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. It was like, you took a shot, missed <laughs> by a mile, but you took that a was, shot, dude. That was you a know? case That's of off. a stand up comic trying to do writing on stage. <laughs> like, just like fucking, <laughs> right, sorry, exactly. dude, that was the wrong thing right? for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> But uh, let's uh, go, it ain't let's, easy, baby. Let's no. go. Let's go through some of these some of these things uh, right. that, that you've done. Um, uh, I'll try to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you were on an episode of Sabrina the Teen Teenage Witch. Oh God, it was my first TV gig. Well, <laughs> oh cool. <laughs> and what's nice about that too is I got to meet Fred Stoller on that. Do you know who Fred is? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fred's yeah, that's, hilarious. That's awesome. He's the best deadpan guy I think I've ever worked with. He's just so funny. And uh, uh, yeah, that was an interesting learning experience for me. Uh, you said Sabrina, right? Not Buffy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sabrina. Yeah, because I did them both, so I get them confused. Yeah, yeah. Um, I played <laughs> was my very first gig on TV, and I was you know nervous, but I was cool. I mean, I did theater, whatever. And I'm, I'm glad there wasn't a live audience because I prefer like three camera stuff. On sure, TV. sure. For some reason, it's more like film, so it just feels more comfortable. And if you fuck it sure. up, you didn't yeah. fuck it up in front of 150 people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm standing, I'm playing like a witch clerk, I think he was called, something like that. They're trying, like at the witch DMV. I forget what the name <laughs> was. And I'm going to forget her name because I always do. And she's a brilliant actress. Melissa she, Joan Hart? No, she played one of the oh. sisters. Or the ants. She played one of the ants. Oh. Help me, Jesus. Was it Caroline oh. Ray? Yeah. yeah I think I, Caroline no. Ray was the one that's also a stand-up. Poet. Yeah, Caroline Ray. Caroline yeah. Ray. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. I heard Joanne. Thank you so much. Yes, Caroline, who I... I'm indebted to to this day, I, though I've still yet to meet her again. I can't wait till I do. <laughs> but I'm standing there. I'm doing my clerk shit. You know, I think uh, 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 she comes up, uh, whoever her name is, comes up. She asks for a thing, and I get my lines. And blah. the camera's behind me shooting her. And uh, I don't remember if they'd already shot me or not. But I have a clerk to my right, Fred, and another clerk over here, and they have their own bits to do as well. So I'm doing my thing, and Carolyn is standing behind Melissa on that, and. A, son, a voice behind me. I mean, the director is over there in Video Village, so it's not him. Whoever it is, somebody behind me, it might have been like assistant camera or camera. I really don't know who it was. Started to direct me. And that's something you don't do. Mm -hmm. Ever. Ever. No matter who, it, you just don't do that. I don't know if they were new or what, but they said, you know, Ezra, you might want to try. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'm, you know more than I do. Carolyn Ray steps forward and says, okay, Bill. I think he's doing just fine. And this, wow. and this person shut the hell up. And I went, okay, lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm so indebted to her for that too, because it kind of made me nervous because I thought, am I not being funny? What's the deal here? Sure. So that was really, really weird. Um, but I was so grateful for that gig. I was so proud to have been on it because, you know, so popular. But also it was just, it was a job. It was like suddenly I'm a, I'm a small white trash kid from fucking Muncie, Indiana. What the hell do I know? Sure. You know, and, and I show up and it's like, I'm doing this thing and there are cameras and people and makeup and things and pure people and whatever. And, and she made me feel so comfortable that day. So Carolyn, if you're listening to this, give me a call. <laughs> she's, <laughs> um, she's hilarious too. I love her. Yeah, she's great. She's, she's great. You were on the Jamie Foxx show. <laughs> Uh -huh. That's a yeah. jump right there. <laughs> you were on um, a party of five. Um, uh, yeah. That, well, um, I'm just realizing I have a story about each one of these things. It's hilarious. <laughs> that I'm not going to tell. Okay, cool. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, we'll get to uh, just throwing things out there to show. Can you tell us any Buffy stories? <laughs> We do like Buffy on this show. My yeah, mom, I, I do. And James, James Marster is an old friend of mine from Seattle. I knew him. In oh, Seattle. cool. Oh, rad. 
And then he booked that gig where they almost burned his head off with that fucking diet or a uh, bleach out job. Yeah. <laughs> and I love James. He's a great guy. He's so wonderful. Um, and yeah. I've seen him in years, but he's just great. And I knew his wife at the time, his first wife, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, uh, we bonded over theater because they had a theater company up in Seattle. And I was kind of big cheese in Seattle theater. <laughs> like that big, of course. Yeah. Big, big cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, I booked that gig. James wasn't on set that day. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of Fred Stoller's book. Actually, he wrote a book called, I think it's called, We're Going to Have You Back, which means if you're a guest star or a supporting player or a co-star or whatever, they always tell you if they want you to take the gig, oh, we'll have this, we'll have this character back. You know, we'll, we'll have Right, it. sure, sure. Sure you will. Uh, but they told me literally that uh, because the, the bartender, whoever the regular bartender was, couldn't shoot this particular episode. And so my agent pushed me and said, take it, take it. I'll have you back. Then. Whatever. Right. Well, I was just happy to get the gig. And it was really, really cool because I'm behind the bar. And it's one of those situations where when you're on set, this is one of the more challenging things. This happened to the Fablemans too. One of the more challenging things when you have to navigate through a jungle, jungle gym of cords cameras, microphones, other actors, anything and just get into your place and say your lines and be able to act it while 45 people are around you. And I actually kind of love that. Sure. I don't know what it is about it, but I, I really respond to the challenge of that. And so with that one, I had to step into the scene, though I don't think they used the stepping in part, though it still worked, I'm, I'm probably for time, but I was suddenly at the bar and I'm delivering lines with whoever, uh, David, maybe? I don't remember who's in the same brand. And I'm I'm uh, delivering the lines. And I literally have something poking in my left side, which is a C-stand. Something else down on my right knee, which I don't even know what the hell that was. And I was like, I'm, I'm so in such an awkward position, but I can still act the fucking scene. And that makes me very, very happy. I mean, there's like a disassociation or something that happens. It's like... This isn't real, clearly. I'm not a bartender who's surrounded by pointy things. What sure. The <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you have to carry the scene, and you do. And that, that was a fun. And then Joss, I think, yeah, Joss was directing that, I think. Um, obviously, he was attached to it. Sure. Put his hand on my shoulder at one point and said, you're doing a great job. And I was like, oh, thank God. You're like, oh, uh, no, what? come on. Come I'm on. Going to not sexually harass me. I'll go <laughs> um which which bar was it was it the underground bar with the yeah it was the, it was like the the, demon, the, the, demon, the demon bar, bar. <laughs> yeah and that's what i thought and uh that's a really cool gig to have because that's that was like, a great gig. and also like i love the demon bar because it's like a world building item you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. In, the, in the bigger story like they have a bar that they hang out in and it's just like that kind of thing so yeah, which is uh, very very cool also it's the kind of bar i would honestly hang out in Right, I mean, oh, for sure. <laughs> before COVID shut down my local bar where I used to go and shoot pool. Right. Just have beer, shoot pool with great guys, blah, blah. You know, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. Every day after the gym, I would go straight there, star dragon, and shoot pool because that's what you do. That's why you work out. Right. So you can get that shit done. And it shut down during COVID. And I, I haven't had a replacement dive bar to go to in Los Angeles. You know, they all died and now everything's full, full, full. Like, right interesting not interesting but uh yeah that kind of bar i love and and i felt at home honestly sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, now of course the other bartender finished his other gig he came back started with, bye sure but uh but at <laughs> yeah. least it, but that's a you know i mean for for us we're pretty big fans of uh yeah uh, of buffy so it's, it's a great uh, show man you know. oh, um, yeah how about being part of fight club that's uh that is uh such a such a marker for that period of time yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. it's uh whether it um how was how was working with uh david fincher was that was that interesting was that i've worked with david now twice i was cut out of zodiac but hundreds of other people were so i don't take it personally right. uh at all it was just like a bit i was improvising and then he found something else for me that didn't work either so hey, whatever right. um and that's fine but got paid, so hey. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I think David's brilliant. Uh, well, obviously he's brilliant. But sure. Even to work with, I mean, it's funny. I have a very natural knack of hitting marks. I don't know why. I actually, I think I do know why because I'm this eye's fucked up. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was I had an accident when I was in sixth grade. 
that like, uh, uh, I don't want to get too graphic, but something, you know, cut it. And and they had to do surgery. It whips it shut. It worked for years in New York. Then I got sick and it freaked out. And so the next doctor took the, uh, um, what's it called, lens out of my eye. I literally have no lens in this eye. Mm. Oh, shit. You have a corrective contact lens now, thank God. All right. <laughs> Marty Feldman working all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, which he worked. So <laughs> there's that. Um, as a result of that, for the years I was like a waiter, for example, I, I prided myself with no depth perception at all to be able to grab a glass, pour the water, put it down. A bit. And I, I learned how to adjust to the spatial surrounding that was different for me than what it was for everybody else. You know, things that they could assume I couldn't assume. I think, OK, reach an inch further than you think you're going to have to. As a result of those years, because this happened years ago. I really do think it, it's affected my uh, uh, pretty unparalleled ability to hit a mark. I'm really freaking good at it. And with David, that is incredibly important. Sure. The hand has to be exactly where he wants it. The look has to be exactly where he wants it. And though we shot that that one scene that I worked with uh, Tim Desarn on, and um, um, sweet by a uh, big, tall lead, fucking lead, uh, Ed. Mm -hmm. uh, on that set we did it mm, 15 20 times maybe it was never my fault that's never nice, <laughs> nice. That's nice. Oh, yeah i was so proud of that sure and then of course <laughs> i know he made one actor cry on the set famous actor cry on the set of zodiac because he had to do it over and over and over and over. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and i actually kind of like that there's something magical to me about that it's like going for sure into reality that you get to recreate every single freaking time and maybe that's theater i don't know but i loved it um sure. and i i feel like I bonded with David, but it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> it keeps you at an arm's distance. Sure. Uh, which is understandable. He's David fucking Fincher. Why yeah. 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 He is. Uh, he is. Have you seen uh, The Killer? Yeah. Yeah. I've not seen it yet. Is it insane? I haven't either. It's you know um, it's 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 uh, it's different an assassin. It's 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 a little different for him. It's yeah. a little bit more. Uh, he's leading more into. Yeah, it's just it's just a little bit more. Um, it's just kind of like a little story. Like it's not like it doesn't have this the 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 scope of a lot of the things that he's done. You know what I mean? So it's just like a yeah, he fires story. on a lot of levels simultaneously. Yeah, and yeah. that's yep, yeah, and that's 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 where I'll you know I'll. This one's a lot more laser focused. Uh, yeah, the killer. I hear the fight stuff. scenes are great. Yeah, yeah, fight scenes are great. Absolutely, the fight scenes are yeah. absolutely absolutely um, fantastic. I, I want to hear. I, what's oh, up? Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just, I was going to ask you about one of the things that you worked on specifically because it's something that sticks out in my head. Uh, that's the hills have eyes. I was I was curious <laughs> well, about we that. Well, we are one for, a horror podcast. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, I was curious about that one for a couple of reasons because I remember when I saw that movie the first time. I like I had obviously seen the original, so I was like, okay, how is this going to stand up? But then Alexander right. Aha, oh, he's um, is like brilliant to me, yeah, and so when I saw that movie. I remember walking out of that movie just going, holy shit, they made it more fucked up than the original. Yeah. And like, <laughs> and they did it well. Like, they did yeah. it really well. So how was it working on that movie? It's a funny story. There seemed to be a lot of these. A friend of mine wants me to write, like, a series of essays about different shit that I've done. Sure. And I would, but I can't name names, so I have to be careful. Um, but it on that one, I'd been to the Sundance previous to the casting call of Hills. Um, and I saw what in America they called switchblade romance. Yeah. Uh, high tension. Uh, yes. High tension. Yeah. 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 And Attention. I saw that <laughs> at a midnight showing and I was completely fucking blown away. Of course. Yeah. The ending. Eh, fuck yeah. That was not his fault. <laughs> no, that was totally uh, producers came in and changed all of that. And he had missed to that readily. Um, I saw that film and I was just so blown away. I mean, the second it got started, the second the action with the head drop outside the semi, it was like, what the fuck world am I in? And then it was relentless. And I yeah. absolutely loved it. I'm not a huge, honestly, I shouldn't say this on the podcast, but I'm not a huge <laughs> follower of horror. I like it, uh, but sure. I'm not huge, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a listen down, you know, down. So it, 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 it's not my one area of where I work. 
Sure. I love it. And God knows I love the fucking fans. We'll get into that, I hope. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, with that film, I was so blown away. I couldn't believe it when I actually got a call, maybe like five, six months later, from my agent at the time um, saying that they wanted me to go in uh, to, I forget the casting director's name, good guy, um, for The Hills Have Eyes. I went by, directed by this guy who did fucking high, high tension, high tension. I went, okay, well, A, I love the French. B, yep. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. And I went in and I auditioned for the role. <clears throat> excuse me. What's the character's name who actually has the flag implanted in him? Um, I can't remember that character's name. I don't remember the actual character's name, but I do know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He came in after my bits, I think. Um, good actor. Uh, but I, I that was the role I'd read for. And it turned at the audition, I turned into an idiot fanboy. I really, really did. <laughs> Alex, I'm just like, I don't know if you're understanding me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking God, that movie. <laughs> I am still terrified by that movie. And he was smiling. He was very sweet and very nice. And I read it and I didn't look it. I didn't hear anything for months, months. And I was very disappointed. I wanted that so bad. I, I was just like, God, I just want to work with this guy. Anything, anything. I don't care what it does for my career. I don't care what I'm at that bullshit. I just, this guy's a fucking genius. And uh, one day, like three, four months later, it's a long time, I was at the gym and I just finished and I was changing and I had time to go home and do nothing because nobody's calling. <laughs> right? <laughs> Life story. And um, my phone rang. And so I got it and it's my agent. And he goes, Hey, do you remember that thing you did for that thing, that time that you did that thing? Uh, yeah, he goes. Well, they want you. I went, Get the fuck out of here. Why did this take four months? He goes. Well, a couple of reasons. Apparently, there were some production issues. I don't know what they were with Wes or whoever was. You know, the locations, man, writing, whatever the story was. But now they want to be, but for a different role. They wanted me for this character named Goggle. I went. Oh God. Okay. Sure. Of course. Yay. Yes. Get. Yeah. 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 And so, <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I knew, I'm over at KNB with Greg, and they're going to make a plastic cast in my head for the makeup, obviously, for the prosthetics. And it's funny because my friend who just recently passed away, Camden Toy, is a dear friend of mine. Um, I'd known him for years in New York. I directed him several times in theater. He's just a dear, dear man. He passed, but he'd done a lot of prosthetic work on Buffy. I assume you know Camden. Yeah, mm, I don't yeah. know that. Is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like three different roles on fucking Buffy. You know, yeah, one of yeah. the prosthetics. Yeah, and yeah. actually, I think, he, I think he, out, I, yeah, he was one of the. Uh, he was he's one, one of the, the gentlemen. He was one of the gentlemen. Yeah. Mm, so, yeah. and I actually turned down that audition like a fucking idiot. I was early <sighs> in my career. I looked at my agent and said, "I went. They don't have any lines. Why would I want to do this?" <laughs> well, one of the yeah. bad moves. <laughs> yeah. I would have been best I would have booked that ever. Bitch. I would have booked it. I'm really good physically, and it would have been so. Oh, yeah. Good. yeah. With Doug, who I also know, and Camden. I mean, come, right. like, come on. But whatever, a side story. So I asked Camden, I said, baby, you've done a lot of prosthetic work. I've never had a full head prosthetic done. Do you have any advice? He goes, yes. I said, okay, what is it? He goes, there will come a moment where you will want to panic. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Oh, so right. easily said. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. See ya. So I go over to KND. And they start slapping the shit on my face. It's great. I'm having a good time. I, I'm a freak for fresh air. Um, mm-hmm. I, I really do freak out if there's not air moving or something. It's like, I don't know what it is, but right. I, I, probably, I want a quick escape. So <laughs> I don't sure. like that. But <laughs> it was a beautiful spring day. It was kind of chilly-ish, like, you know, 60. And in L.A., that's chilly. <laughs> and they had the big work doors open. And it was such a fresh room. It smelled so good. And they started slapping the shit all over me. And blah, 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 blah. There came a moment. Two people were working on me, Greg and someone else. Greg and Nicotero. And they... Mm-hmm. Started slapping the shit on, and right, it got here over the nose. I didn't have any little hoo hoos in my nose. They were doing it oh. just like free form because that stretches the nostrils, and they couldn't do that. So there was a moment when the air quality changed. It went from cold, cool, to hot. Mm-hmm. And I felt it from my toes up to the top of my head. Holy fucking Christ, I'm going to die. Yep. And I heard Camden, there will come a moment when you want to. <laughs> Don't. So <laughs> that was just the best advice I ever got. So I was sitting there, I was like, oh, thank Jesus. Fuck God for Camden Toy. I have to buy him dinner. It was, it was so great. 
And I relaxed and I relaxed. And when we were done, Greg actually said, thank you for not panicking. <laughs> and it turned out what's weird about that is that mold got destroyed. And so they had to do it again. Oh, no. I, was cool with it. I was cool with it. It was like, it was great. Yeah. Um, and now I actually have the mold in, in my bedroom next to my bed. It's like this weird fucking face thing that they did. Oh, but shit. And mm -hmm. of Fantastic. course, they did the makeup and the tests. And when I saw their mock-up for Goggle, the actor in me, I looked at it because they had it sitting right on the desk. What it was they wanted to create. And it was just a mock-up. And I went, oh, my God, he's heartbroken. What is he's he's, this, he's a sad clown. Who is this guy? He's so sad. It's like it really, I still have a picture of it. It's still kind of like it really appealed to my broken heart part of me. Sure. Which is why he was separate from the rest of the, the uh, uh, people. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. was a loner because he couldn't handle what they had to do to survive. Right. Um, and it was just, I don't know if any of that reads. It doesn't really matter. It's so fast. But it, it. It was just a fabulous experience. It was an amazing experience. And I got to spend about 18 hours in about, I think, five or six different prosthetic pieces all day, all night. Oh, shit. That was troubling because uh, one of them kept hitting my eye funny. Um, but it was a brilliant experience. And I got to work with Alex, you know, twice. I got to work with him in mirrors when he was directing me from, I don't know, Prussia or wherever the hell he was. Oh yeah, at, at, with Greg on on the side of Greg Nicotero. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna ask how is working with Greg Nicotero because he is Greg he is, Nicotero is a genius. He, yeah, the man is brilliant. Um, I don't know why I haven't been in for The Walking Dead, <laughs> <laughs> Greg, but he's absolutely brilliant. He is. He's he's, he's a legend. What he does. Yeah, absolutely. Legend. I mean, he's been. I mean, he's been doing it the whole the whole time. You know, it's oh, pretty. Oh, and B was amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he was in the. Uh, you know, and I mean, he was in. Uh, he was helping out with Savini and all those guys in yeah. Dawn of the Dead and every. You know what I mean? Like that guy's got that. That guy is is royalty at this. And point. he was a doll baby. He was just the sweetest man on the freaking planet. That's to awesome. Me. You know, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it around and and big up you a little bit more. Um, I read actually that you beat out a bunch of uh, actual Brits I know for the say. role in the Prestige, uh, as uh, with your Cockney accent for the yeah. Barker. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm so fucking proud of that. Right, I can't exactly. even to tell you. I don't care if I never work with with Chris again, though. I'd love to. Right. Uh, uh, it was so bizarre because we're in the waiting area. There are five or six of us. And most of them, I'll think all of them, but most of them were British. I'm like, oh my God, I don't stand a fucking chance. Right. <laughs> Come on. What? 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 Muncie fucking Indiana, must I remind you? <laughs> Gosh. With a little intellectual background, but mostly white dress. Uh, redneck truck driver father, settle down. And so <laughs> actually, I think that kind of speaks to the working class dialect. Sure. Uh, of Cockney. It kind of sort of makes sense if I think about it. Um and the fact I booked that was just astounding. And that I got to fucking meet Hugh Jackman. Mm, right. And, and, oh, my God. Um, help me. Christian too. Bale. No. Um, th that would have been lovely. No. Uh, brilliant. Uh, 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 how could he play it? Um, oh, The Ring, my precious. Uh, oh, uh, oh um, uh, what's his name? Um, yeah. do, uh, the guy who plays uh, Smeagol. Um, it's, uh, yeah. why, why am I? Th me this too. Is this I've is had too. a stroke, I think, recently. I because most people don't know him by name, like automatically. Most it's an easy name. name. What? It's like a regular. It starts name. with an A. I know it starts with an A. I know I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm 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 sitting in my little waiting chair downtown, uh, this huge, gorgeous fucking theater. Andy Circus. Andy yes, Circus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so brilliant. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm sitting there and blah blah blah. I'm reading Variety, whatever the fuck I'm doing, and waiting trying not to get nervous there are hundreds of extras i mean this place is packed and but i'm fine because i'm separated from <laughs> i'm in the supporting character actors chair <laughs> don't talk to me no no please don't <laughs> and so we're sitting there reading paper in full drag of costume suddenly his hand appears in front of me and it says, hello, I'm Hugh Jackman and I looked up and I went, oh my god <laughs> I've only had that reaction twice with a star once with hugh jackman and once with scarlett johansson mm -hmm. you look up and you're like holy fucking god <laughs> you are the most beautiful person i've ever seen in my entire freaking life what <laughs> the film does not capture how gorgeous these particular two people are sure um, it's, it's really otherworldly it was really disturbing so i'm like, <laughs> i'm like, hugh jackman ezra buzzington nice to meet you and we're talking a little bit, 
And he's a lovely gentleman. And it's really, really nice. And I just can't believe I'm meeting this dude. And then suddenly Andy Circus joins us and I drop him like a fucking hot potato. And, <laughs> You're an absolute genius. I love everything you do. <laughs> so I think he might have been a little offended because we never sat down and started reading his paper. But it was like, it was great. <laughs> and, and then we did our scene. And I warned sound. I told them, I said, you know, dude, I'm from the musical theater. I've got a big ass voice and it's going to be really loud because it's a huge fucking all the time. The stairway coming up, it's like four stories of just stairs coming up. Gorgeous. Right. And so I, I told him, I warned him, so the boom was here. I'm like, that's a little close, I think, but whatever. Not my problem. And I'm mic'd, of course. And so I let it out. And <laughs> they cut and the sound came over and said, okay, now we understand. We're going to pull it down a little bit because we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm a like, barber. I have to be loud. <laughs> so it, was, it was a great shoot. It was just one day. But it was wonderful. And Christopher That's was fun. So wonderful and supportive. I mean, there's nothing like a supportive set. And you know at the second you show up if you know where to look. When you get on set, the first place to look always, I tell actors, is to the AD. Find the assistant director. See what their attitude is. See how they're dealing with people. See how they're organizing things. If they're assholes and they're shoving people around, they're shouting and they're doing you're in trouble. Right. Get ready to wash your ass. Just be quiet, be mum, boop, boop, and right. just through the day. But if they're not, then you're in good hands. And that's the God's truth. I, I love that. I, I have uh, to. I have to tell you guys my beautiful celebrity interaction story, just because it's hilarious. Now that you said the thing about Hugh Jackman, because with me living in New York, I walked it, during this time. I was going to Times Square a lot because I was performing in a comedy club that was right by Times Square proper. Can I ask? Yeah. Is this old Times Square or new Times Square? New Times Square. Uh, this was within the last. Uh, fuck i want to say like six seven years okay so um, like the mall of Times square <laughs> sure for sure yeah yeah <laughs> so i'm going in like uh, you know just the shuffle of people blah 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 blah. and i ended up accidentally shoulder checking this person and then i look and it was bradley cooper <laughs> and he was doing something he was doing something on fucking broadway That's and fair. I stopped for a second and I went, uh, oh, fucking, holy shit, you're gorgeous. And then he just, like, <laughs> he, like <laughs> and he looks down and he goes, thank you. And he goes, uh, he goes, Bradley Cooper. I was like, I know who the fuck you are. And then I shook his hand and I said, you were great in Midnight Meat Train. He goes, nobody's oh. ever said that to me. Oh, oh goes, my God. Yeah. I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten. Because I saw yeah. it a thousand years ago. No, um, yeah. That movie is insane. Yeah, it's yeah it's absolutely. Wild. It's a movie. great fucking film. Yeah, and that was just funny because he just he literally goes, nobody has ever said that to me, and then he said thank you, and then yeah. he shook my hand, <laughs> and um he said he goes yeah I'm here doing Broadway, and then he pointed off to whatever he's doing. I think it was the Elephant Man, to be honest. Maybe. I think that's yeah, actually maybe. what he was doing. Um, but yeah, I you know met him for like 15 seconds, and I was just like, I just almost knocked Bradley Cooper to the fucking ground. <laughs> 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 that's great. I gotta tell you, um, I've worked with some big, some really, really, really big names, and I gotta tell you. Um, the majority of them are absolutely great. They're so grateful for where they're, they are, you know, and they they know they're lucky. Uh, not all of them, but the majority of them, uh, right. they really, really do. And they tend to go out of their way, more film than TV, but they tend to go out of their way to really make you feel comfortable because they know it's a hard freaking thing to show up for one day or three days or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, then just walk away because they know everybody. It's it's a family. A film set really is a family. Sure. And you're suddenly the interloper guest at Thanksgiving who nobody really knows. So they uh, the bigs tend to go out of their way to welcome you and, and be cool. Um, That's rad. Right. But yeah, It's great to hear. Honestly, yeah. um, so let's let's. I can honestly continuously go through. You were unjustified. <laughs> you were. I, 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 I'm like, ooh, I want to talk to you. Couple times. Uh, yeah, I'm proud of that. Different yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's, yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Uh, Nightmare Cinema. We could actually spend a lot of time. I I almost feel like we could actually even have an entire episode of Nightmare Cinema because Nightmare Cinema is very good, and you were a big part of that. Um, and well, that was uh, David. David Slate. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Listen, I'd, it, shot, I'd shot years ago. I'd shot like an infomercial kind of in house thing for what was the orange logo phone thing, Singular or something like that, whatever the fuck it was. Probably four years old board, a thousand years ago. <laughs> and I played like a crazy homeless person who was yelling and screaming on the street in downtown LA. And David was directing. And that's when we met. And he goes, Oh, I loved you. I can't wait to work with you again. I said, Great. Give me your phone number. And so we did. And so we got together and have lunch. And 
then David and I started working together, and I'm so proud of that. Uh, he's he's a brilliant man. He's just brilliant. He's he can be <laughs> socially um, less effusive than they like in Hollywood. Sure. Um, so I think that's made it maybe a little trickier for him in places. But he's so fucking great. I mean, yeah. when we crossed bones, I was like, "Thank you, David." Uh, the TV show, great experience to went to fucking Puerto Rico for nine months. Who can complain? Um, and it was problematic for a lot of people on set, but definitely not me. It was an absolutely wonderful shoot. And then, of course, Dark Harvest came. Well, actually, Nightmare Cinema came. That was a straight up offer. He said, "Please come. I would like you on set. I like your energy." Blah blah. Shot it, and uh, uh, then Dark Harvest. I could talk to him for probably six episodes singly <laughs> about 30 days of night oh, yeah. because 30 days of night is you can ask anybody literally one of my top movies of That's all time great. it's so yeah. good it's yeah. so well done like they're so uh, uh the way he uses oh God, i'm gonna forget his that's name. amazing he had sent me that script and he wanted me to be in it but the studio wanted somebody with a bigger name so they went with that person i forget what the role was uh, so I was like, okay, whatever. Um, the um, uh, who is the main vampire? God, what is his name? I can't believe it. he's in Succession. He's in, he's in all sorts of things. Anyways, he's amazing. Like it's an amazing movie, and and I would just love to talk to him about it. So, uh, if you ever chat with him, just tell him that uh, Ryan from another goddamn horror podcast. Big. I will. Big, yeah. big, fan. <laughs> big, big fan has uh, um, his uh, his uh, his section of um of, nightmare of uh, well, nightmare is amazing. Um, also, he does a he does the robot dog in um, uh, what's it called? Black Mirror, uh, oh, the yeah. robot oh. dog is, uh, episode, and right, right, right. and that I think is absolutely fantastic. And That's I think, amazing. I'm yeah, it's just... amazing, and like he just has like he has a great vision for things. I just like the way his stuff looks. And the so... shit that goes on in his head through the artwork that he posts, some of it AI, some of it not, is just really so fucking disturbing mm -hmm. god love him i can't imagine what's inside that little head um but yeah i'm, I'm incredibly grateful to, to to david and it's funny when we had our lunch he photographs a lot he takes a lot of still pictures and i'm not used to that i mean i'm sitting having lunch with this little thing and suddenly the camera's like click click and he actually stopped and went this makes you nervous doesn't it i said well, a little bit <laughs> but he had he had been a fan of mine from ghost world he loved weird al and uh, so that's the main reason he cast me in the original thing, I think. And in fact, I could do it, obviously. But 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 yeah. And so we kind of bonded over that. Sweet man, such a sweet man. I, I don't know if you caught this. You said his name, and I that was me attempting not to fanboy <laughs> over here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's used to having fanboys, especially uh, middle aged fanboys. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, but let him know that there is one floating around out here. Uh, so, I'm sure he probably knows, but I definitely will. yeah. But uh, yeah. that I'm a that I'm a big fan of a uh, big big fan of his work uh, because uh, uh, um, what I what. 30 Days of the Night, A, being a, I'm a comic book person as well, uh, of course. Uh, and uh, that was a great, it was a, an amazing. Yes, beautiful series. Beautiful yeah. series, just with great, uh, great art and all that. I have a beautiful hard copy um, of that around here somewhere that he signed. Because oh, I signed, oh, shit. I helped Rad. his makeup person with some makeup test stuff. Um, and so I did that. And so he sent that to me. So thank you. It was like gorgeous. And it's just, it's just Danny uh, Huston. Danny Huston. Yeah, that's who I was talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he's a he's a great actor. And um, what I, I what I loved in that though is he took those vampires and he made them like what I want vampires to be, sort of like sure. monsters. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I and, and I'm, a, which is funny because he also does one of the Twilight movies, uh, which is like the the opposite side of this. And I'm <laughs> uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm not. I'm. I, We're not I, the target audience. Is it, well, Wait, no. which, which one did he do? He did Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse. Um, and uh, I am uh, oddly. Uh, not anti uh, Twilight, and uh, I was literally just watching some the other night. And not um, anti Twilight is that what you said? 
I'm not. I'm not anti Twilight. I think it's oh, fine. Like, I think it's fine. You know what I mean? Like it is what it is. It's just sometimes okay. you sometimes you need a little lightweight kind of fun stuff. But I will Ooh. tell you the way he does the the vampires in Thirty Days a Night. Like oh, uh, I I am uh, uh, I have Eastern and my mother's Eastern European and they, ah, you know, so you so so it's just that Eastern European sure. blend to them and just how monstrous and animalistic they were and what he was able to get out of those roles and the and the like almost like drone shot at the top of coming through and everything he just did such a great job with it that it like um that it was just like one of those movies that i consistently watch like probably four times a year quarterly i'll definitely it's definitely like a go-to sort of thing well it's a work of art i mean the 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 guy no matter what he does even twilight i mean he he and dark harvest from what i've heard Mm -hmm. uh, he, he lends an air well of his authenticity i mean it's like that that's what an artist does is they bring whatever it is they have to the table to the table right and so even even the schlock if it could be called sure. schlock, um even that will have an edge of expertise and vision that most directors don't have i mean sure. i'm so lucky with my directors I can't begin to tell you how lucky I've been with my freaking directors. Well, you've worked with, I mean, you've worked with some of the the, yeah. the, the I mean, greats of when modern. I stop and think about it. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I actually accomplished some shit. You know, you're <laughs> like, I never, I never stop and think about it. So yeah. <laughs> you're like, screw that thing. Yeah. Um, that just gets in the way. Um, let's talk about <laughs> Brooklyn 45. Uh, okay. Really, was which was the... your second time working with this director? With or yeah, speaking of geniuses, yeah, absolutely. Uh, how um, do you pronounce his last name? Gagan. 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 Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, but, Ryan, you were right. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I grew up with somebody with the last name Gagan. So I, uh, well, I, I mean, try- look at it. You, you got to give yourself a break. I mean, look at Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. We were, we were like, throwing a bunch of different it. pronunciations. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just, and no, Ryan's just like, nope, it's, it's Gagan. It's Gagan. <laughs> I'm like, nope, nope, you can keep talking. But I know that. I should have told you when you asked how to pronounce something, I just said, Ted. What? <laughs> right. what are you talking about? Yeah, right. Ted? T-E-D. <laughs> Not that hard, graduate. Come on. You um, know, I want to I want to I want to mention this really quick before we like really jump into Brooklyn 45. But just my only real thing that I wanted to mention on it is when you talk about directors that you've worked with, mm-hmm. and obviously Ted is a genius, but you also were starring right by one of like the godfathers of horror indie cinema. And that's Larry Fassenden. Tell me. Like, talk about a fucking who's who of yeah. like a cast in general. But then, like, Yo, that you know, cast is unfuckwithable. Yeah. The cast is absolutely. <laughs> what a great word that is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The cast is incredible. And then when I saw, like, so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Larry's stuff in general. Like, yeah. I've always been a fan of his work. But then when I saw him in the movie, like you don't get to see Larry act too much. No, like you in yeah, general, yeah, yeah. you just don't. And so, like, how was it working with him in this movie? Um, uh, it's funny. There, there, there's a sort of standard statement that is definitely true, especially when you're working with an ensemble cast. Um, mm-hmm. it it all dribbles up to the top and so whoever is and i try to i try to remember this if, if i'm lucky enough to be in a position of leading either a theater piece or what the fuck ever it it boils down you set the tone the lead the the either the major name or the this that or whatever it's like you, if you're number one on the call sheet mm-hmm. set the tone and larry clearly knows what he's doing i mean he's done this for years He's just so amiable and so easy and hilariously funny <laughs> and non judgmental and aware of who he is and who he's not. And sure. and he's just a real dude, you know, he just really is. And so that feeds the rest of the ensemble. I mean, we're all pretty much at the same level in terms of what we have to do in the film. In fact, he has less than a lot of people. Sure. You know, spoiler, he disappeared dead for some of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, honestly, the dummy they used to replace him was just as nice. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Absolute that, sweetheart. That's not yeah. easy what that thing was doing. <laughs> um, but Larry, um, I count him as a dear friend. Um, he... It's just so natural with it all, you know? We're all here to have a good time. We're all here to try and create art. Uh, we're all here to 
deliver Ted's vision, and we all love him so much, um, that we unified like the second we all met, the very second we met, uh, everybody. It was just, boom, we're there. And what's weird about that is I've never really done a film like this. I've done theater pieces like this, where it's an ensemble sure. piece, and you're together all the time in every single fucking scene. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. For example, Marasad or uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You're in a group setting, and you're always in, even if the focus isn't on you. And that was literally what we had to do every single fucking day, um, every day. And it was cold in Chicago. <laughs> um, but the way they took care of us, the the production team, everybody. I mean, that production design is just incredible. So incredible. word worthy. So cool. Yeah. yeah Ted I love kept that. sending me pictures as they were building it. He kept sending them to me, saying, and other people saying, "Hey, this is what's happening." I was like, "Oh my god, this looks great!" And you basically, we were in a big. A former warehouse that some dude had taken over to house his own business, which is, I think, providing things for other productions in the Chicago area kind of mm -hmm. gig. There was like wood over there and props over there and all sorts of shit. And mostly heated. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the, the, the set designer, I can't think of the name because I'm an idiot, um, had built the room. I mean, a square room in the middle of this warehouse that had removable walls so they could shoot through, you know, this, that, or the other thing to get sure. it. Um, but the detail on that, I just kept walking around looking at all the detail. Most often you don't see it in the film, but like on one of the typewriters, there was a little spatter of blood. And I was like, I was like, what the fuck? Who would ever see that? You know, it's like, it was just absolute genius on pretty much every level of that shoot. Fuck yeah. Um, we were all of us were very, very lucky. And we got to spend, you know, upwards of 10 hours a day with each other. And they, they gave us our own little private area. We had these wonderful little big tents with like a little a rug down and a little desk table thing, and a nice easy chair and a lamp and a heater that got all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we could get away if we wanted to, <clears throat> if we had a big scene coming up or something, we could go work on our own. Each one of us had our own thing, but they're all in the same general area. Uh, but then Primarily what we did, or at least for, through the first half of the film, before it got really, really cold, um, the set was like a big square, like I said, in the middle. And then off about 20, 25 feet off to the right was a waiting area, uh, a holding area, where they would hold us with like a lamp and little heaters and blankets and chairs. And we'd all sit there and just bond and laugh and goof and run lines and do whatever it was to get to know each other. Uh and I don't really remember any of us thinking we need to do this to build our ensemble. We just automatically did it. Sure. And, it kind and of feels it, too. It yeah. feels real natural. And honestly, one of my favorite things in all of horror this year was the tension you and Jeremy Holm built oh. <laughs> between each other. Just I love going Jeremy up and so up. much. Yo, that was some of the best shit I've ever seen. Like Thank that, you. just that that part of the the whole movie is one of the most amazing parts to me and and it really it crushed most of horror like it's the thing i've watched the movie three times now and it's what it's I, I love it's so fucking good i'm so lucky to be <laughs> i cannot tell you how lucky i am to be in this fucking movie when we shot mohawk uh ted had told me previously about what he was working on you know it's like a one set drama in brooklyn war veterans and blah 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 and then, of course, I didn't hear anything for a long time. I thought, well, that, that project's dead. <laughs> then out of the blue, you know, because I'm done. Here's the script. Please play it. And I'm, okay, you got it, dude. Um, I would do anything for Ted. Anything. I don't care what it is. Um, um, he, he, he wouldn't let me go nude on this, which I wanted to do. <laughs> I've done that several times. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. He didn't let me do that. So well, it's interesting, too. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say, um, I, th between the, you and, uh, um, um, God, I just, Jeremy Holm is that, uh, like both of you, and I don't say this to, I actually haven't said it to any guests we've ever had. I think both performances in this movie were from you and him were, I, I hate saying like award winning, but they were they were very real and some of the best I've seen in a very long time. Thank like you so it, much. well, and in such a and it well and it it's, I mean, you need that to to drive up the to make the 
like a movie like that because it's a simple because it is like you must have loved it because it is almost like a play it you know, you, you know it, said that you know, a yeah lot it, of oh for said. sure it's right which, very noticeable that you it could be turned it, like it just felt that way because it's yeah. one room right and, it's, mostly yeah and it's a and it's it's just a great it's just a great it's just a great ensemble cast of people like dealing with each other and it has almost like a clue vibe kind of and like mm-hmm. a, people coming in and people like dealing with each other and and, and you needed you needed a hundred and sixty percent from from everybody in it and especially like kind of characters like like big personality characters Mm -hmm. like yourself and almost him the 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 yang to your yin of being the more like he was a big personality but it was kind of like flamboyant and kind of fancy where you were kind of like old and rugged and leathered and you know what i mean it was like that balance of that and those performances just everybody did a great job obviously yeah. clearly because you couldn't have a a weak link in in that situation no, you but could like, not. It, it, it would it would destroy the film yeah uh, it, yeah truly would and I, th- I assume ted knew that yeah uh, and so he was very very careful with the casting and uh, th- i count them all as very different uh now because we went through a thing we yeah. did we went through a thing now ted has said this in interviews that i've read that <laughs> i'll never forget i've never shot a film like this you show up and I've worked with Biggs, you know, you show up and he has literally the blocking plan for every single scene. He has blocked it out in terms of where we'll move and when and why and how and to whom and where the camera will be, obviously. And you don't do that in a movie. Rarely does that happen in a movie. I can't imagine right. it happening again. And I appreciated that being in the theater because it's like that's kind of one of the things you do early on. You try to block it. Sure. Um, you don't wait till the day and then, well, the camera says this and the lights say this and we'll all have to move that light and blah, blah, blah. You know, you can't afford that. In an right. Sure. So he knew exactly what we were going to do. And I would say 90% of it we did. Uh, if there was a weird problem, which periodically there will be, um you simply talk to ted say hey here's the thing if i walk over there that means this if i stay here that means this can we make that work and if he had said no you do what he did because you trust him implicitly he knows exactly what it is he wants and yet ted being ted will say well let me think about that and they'll talk to camera and whoever else as like yeah we're good let's do it that way so it's like you you feel safe and taken care of and listened to and uh, that character for me, um, I've never had this happen with a role. Um, There's one day, I, I swear to God, I know, it, interestingly enough, I can't remember what the scene was. Uh, it just won't come back to me. But there was a moment when I was standing in my position and I had to deliver whatever speech it was I had. And I, it hit me so hard that I had to leave the set. Um, I asked Ted if I could stop for 10 and he said, yes, of course. So I went off and stood off to the side because in that particular moment, I suddenly realized that I had based this entire character, not in terms of his stance or his physicality, but in terms of his um, needs on my stepfather. Mm. And I suddenly realized why my stepfather was an alcoholic. And it hit me very, very hard. And I had to leave the set and think about it, process it, incorporate it, which is the most important thing to me, and utilize it. Um, And from that point on, I was like, oh, this is Dick Adams. All right, this is my stepdad. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it why you were such a drunk. Now I get it why you were a lash out at people for no apparent reason. Never abusive. Don't get me wrong. Right. I was very lucky. You know, read my book, The House on Maine. You'll find out more. Was <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, it, it? And that was. I'm still thinking about it. It's like it, it's close to breakdown time because it was just very personally real. Yeah horrifyingly real and uh what a like a what a beautiful 
because most people aren't going to ever get that gift. Right. You know what I mean? Nobody are going to be sitting there channeling somebody from their life and all of a sudden get that vision. Uh, that is, uh, that's absolutely uh, beautiful. And like, yeah. um, and it also allowed me the, the, the freedom to forgive him, which was sure. really nice. Yeah. It's even yeah. more beautiful. Yeah. 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 You're like, Oh, I yeah. get, you know what I mean? I and, get it, it now. and having been through some of that stuff personally uh, with myself, just like going like, Oh, like I do this now. Cause and now, okay. And you're like, so I get it. Uh, that's a, uh, that's real stuff, man. And uh, it was real. And uh, most and- people go through decades of therapy to reach <laughs> that conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> myself included. I fucking dude. It took me, it took me 25 years of therapy to forgive my father. So like yeah. you, you, you took a way easier road. Like good for you. Like, <laughs> like honestly, more fun yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I got paid better. for it. So fuck everything. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> it's it's like the op- opposite of therapy. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was a, that was a great learning experience. I was very, very, very lucky. I've been the luckiest guy on the fucking planet. You know, I really got him. That's so cool. I yeah. love that. Yeah, we um we we were the second Graham had seen Brooklyn 45 first, and we're big fans of Shudder on here. Um and independent horror in general and graham was like oh you got to see it and i was like oh yeah and then finally we you, watched, yeah, but finally when we watched it we were like all of us were like oh my god that was yeah. mm-hmm. absolutely that was absolutely that was like a um i i have this thing where it's like if a, if i don't even think about my phone for a movie it's yeah. a, like it's like a, a winner of a movie and it's a terrible sure. reality but like there's a lot of movies where it's like like you know like if i have the distraction i can go there this was like a like a, like i couldn't like the whole thing and it was just so beautifully done and when you see like when you see movies that that have like a play like element to it whether it's whether it's clue or or even the uh uh one of the what's that movie knives out or anything like yeah. that that have like that that sort of like uh air to it like it kind of reminds you of why you like movies yeah you, you know and I mean, it's like and i know like i actually felt that way with uh, Ma- uh, the mad max fury road too like halfway through oh, i was man. like oh this is why i like movies you know what i mean like yeah like it just it's just crazy. it's just like that thing yeah. where it's just like you know and so and so like halfway through brooklyn 45 i was like it was so like comfortable and so good and just like a good like ghost story with like mm-hmm. interesting people with like kind of like like a collective secret you didn't really know and like you know and like and, and like a lot of different things going on and like and it was just written so well and then just performed with 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 like the real with that real umph the, of and gravity from every every person and uh and that's you know and that's why i brought up like you know like tom hardy and and uh uh you know gary oldman they bring that gr- gravity to it and and that's mm. what you and i i mean not the not that independent horror isn't filled with tons of great actors because it is but sometimes it's like those moving pieces you you don't catch a lot of that and uh right. so to be able to, be, to to perform that and carry a movie that is really just like a nuts and bolts ghost story and and this and that to make it like something that we all were like oh wow that's that's for real and widely loved like uh on a ton of like on a ton of great movie lists for the year and stuff oh like that God. you know that? yeah i i mean i can believe it but like it's just yeah. nice it's just nice that it had and especially on a year where movies like when evil lurks came out and the sacrifice mm-hmm. game came out right at the end and they're you know the the new evil dead movie and the, right. you know the, there was a lot of competition for great horror films this year and you you all really really brought it to this little movie that everybody walked away from it was like i love that that was exactly what i wanted to watch and you know and yeah. it's funny too when we were shooting it we all thought of course because you always kind of do sure like, oh this is going to be great this feels really good but then we realized the world we're in it's like you know it's it, it, it's going to be on streaming nobody's going to see it blah 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 it's not like the old days when we get a theatrical release sure and then you would get reviews and then you know whatever everything's changed so much but the fact that it was rewarded so universally was um i you know, of course i had a google alert for brooklyn 45 <laughs> and i would learn you know the 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 fucking baseball you know scores all the time but <laughs> it was said that too. i was like no, that's the wrong one but <laughs> the fact that it was rewarded so uh universally uh made it even more worthwhile it was already worthwhile i mean we knew it was good sure. i didn't get to see it in austin sadly because i couldn't go but we knew it was still good and we were proud of that and that was kind of enough 
honestly, between whatever pay you get and, and the reward of having had a wonderful experience is often what an actor will only have to look back on. When this got so much attention by the majors, it's like, well, this is really a good thing. And it made us feel good. I mean, it didn't really change anything, I don't think, for anybody's career or anything, but it 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 was still very rewarding. And sure. um, I don't know, that's I'm what sorry. we try to do with this podcast is take like movies like yours and 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 really like just sing to the skies about them. And I went into this. Having having seen uh, uh, having recently had decided, oh well, uh, we are still here is by far my favorite ghost story mm-hmm. of all time. And then um, <clears throat> and then I saw this. I was like, I mean, if this counts as a ghost story, this is my favorite. Now. It does. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. It does. I think, so right? yeah, I think it does. Yeah, it's a ghost story. Uh, but I love both those movies so goddamn much. Like, so I'm really happy that uh, that Ted and the cast are getting like big ups for for we this are too <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen and you never this, do. exactly and this honestly i have not heard one person that i've talked to that's seen this movie say anything negative about it it's and funny. i mean I, 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 I just like i you know i talk to horror fans a lot and some horror fans are fucking dicks and they're like <laughs> some of them are and they're like even those ones are still like that was a damn good movie yep. like you, you guys have one that's universally praised from every well, from my experience anyway. i mean there are a couple rotten tomato reviews that are like really did you watch the fucking movie what are you saying dude? <laughs> right yeah with this but you know, it is what it is. And what's nice too, I love about this film is their practical effects. I mean, they're you know, a little mm-hmm. yeah. coloring around the edges. Other than that's practical. I mean, the poor girl, I can't think of her name, who played his dead wife and the ghost and the hand and all that shit. She's under the table. I mean, she's literally <laughs> under the table. She has to move her hand around in such a way, you know, it's like, woo. And she was so good because she was a dancer. Um, she really knew how to physicalize something like that. I was going to ask you. Yeah. Nice. yeah, I'm very, very, very lucky to have um, connected with such a, an incredible group of people. It's my favorite experience in filmmaking, bar none. And I've had oh, some that's cool. That's bar none. So, uh, so what do you got? What do you got coming up? I got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Harvest is out. <laughs> What's that? Dark Harvest is out. Yeah. People can check out finally. Mm-hmm. Finally, it was supposed to be out the year before, and we finished it. We shot it in Canada. It was great. <laughs> we had so much fun. Oh, I did. Um, uh, I think everybody did. It was in Winnipeg. God help us. But it, it, it. We shot, of course, at night. Exteriors, cold in October sure. in yep. Canada. Hey, but we kind of we lucked out because it wasn't that bad. Uh, it really, really wasn't. And my part is really small in it. It's present. I think I have like two lines, I think. But it's like mm-hmm. he's, he's a scary presence, which is a pair I've heard, which is nice. He and is. I seem yeah. to have a really, really, really good time because David's so great. Uh, but it didn't come out when it was supposed to come out. Yeah. Why, you ask? Ask Amazon. Mm-hmm. Because mm. they bought MGM a day and a half before our movie was supposed to come out. Oh mm. shit! Son of a what's this? <laughs> you know, this is nothing. Okay, let's throw that over here for maybe streaming later, right? So I'm sure that probably I haven't spoken with David about it, but I'm I'm sure it probably affected him in a way that is uh, um, not positive. I know it did me and Casey Likes, who's now on Broadway, by the way. The male lead, the young male lead in that film, is playing in Back to the Future on Broadway and doing very well. I'm thrilled for this. Oh yeah. That kid's Ooh. crazy talented, and he's a great kid. I mean, his feet are on the ground. He's a smart kid. Anyway, um, it it was a great shoot. Loved it. Loved, of course, working with David. Um, and I like the idea of the film, though I honestly I still haven't seen it, so I can't really say. Whoops! I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, David, but my part's so small. Uh, <laughs> David, uh, have you seen his IMDb? If you watched everything that he's been on, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you got something to say. You got a, you got a busy you got a busy afternoon of your. Uh, and uh, also, to be I'm fair, very lucky, as I said, to, yes. to be fair, the movie literally did just come out not yeah. long ago at all. Like, yeah. and. It it was also one of those and ones only that, on streaming obviously yeah well and that's the thing is like so one one thing that we are lucky about in new york is that we do get limited screenings of certain films oh, that really? happen yeah and dark harvest was one of those ones it was available in theaters for like one day 
Yeah, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was a random. It was one of those random things that, like, I ca- I can't remember even what. I didn't know was. that either. I would have gone. Whoa! <laughs> it, it was like a one day thing where it was just like, oh, by the way, this movie's out and it has one showtime. So, like, if you can make it to it, fuck yeah. If not, you have to watch it on streaming. So, I wonder why they did yeah. that. I've seen it happen with a ra- with films randomly, um, but that was one of them. It just happened yeah. to have one one day, one showtime at one theater. Like, it was just one of those things. In like Brooklyn um, or in Manhattan, like Angelica or where were they? No, it was in Manhattan. I um, in fact, I think it was an AMC. I think it was oh. actually an AMC because they have they have an AMC, Weird. a couple of AMC theaters that do um random like indie films, especially horrors, because they have like some AMC uh branch that's like specifically to show horror films. Interesting. And yeah, so it was showing in theaters for a day. So it was. I mean, there was at least that. not enough. <laughs> No, definitely right. not enough. So how did it play? I hope it played well. It did. It was uh, from everything that, like, I saw the movie. It's a good movie. Like, it's legitimately, it's a very well done movie. Um, it deserved a bigger theatrical release for sure. Like, I'm sure David would agree. Yeah, it just, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to more people seeing it. It's a cool throwback type of horror film. Like, it reminds you of, like, those midnight movies. Like, the ones that you would see yeah. at the drive-in and shit like that. Like, it's a fun horror movie, so... Well, I'm hoping that it will will uh, last in terms of iconography, in that, you know, oh, this is a Halloween movie you have to see every yeah. year. So it will eventually build and build and build. That it feels cool. that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, cross, because God knows, you know, Amazon needs the money, so... Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> Wow, they did something that only worked for them and not for other people. Huh, that's Crazy. weird. I wouldn't have never yeah. thought that. Uh, uh, a bookstore or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> do you think you can handle the uh, Sinister Six uh, uh, questions? I'm a little you? scared. Yeah, you should be. Oh, we oh, judge. Yeah. Ju- we yeah. judge. Super yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah I, I gotta hard. go. Sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner's ready. Thanks, honey. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first one: Freddy or Jason? Oh my god. <laughs> uh you guys have answered this already i assume yes uh for me mm-hmm. freddie yeah freddie yeah i actually auditioned for the remake oh no kidding oh, oh wow shit. you would have you would have done a good job i did an incredible job <laughs> yeah. here's the thing i guarantee you i was the wild card they used <laughs> to get who was it timothy who played it um uh what's Jack Earl haley Jack he's yeah. a brilliant actor yeah mm-hmm. probably, oh yeah my guess is they wanted to have options so that if he, you know, balked or waited or what the fuck ever, they said, well, we can just go with this guy. So automatically his agents will say, well, no, you're going to go with us. So it's like, I was that guy. And sure. I got to tell you, I don't know who he is. I've never worked with him. I don't plan to work with him again. But the director in that audition was an absolute cock. <laughs> cool. uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. That reflects in the film. Asshole. That yeah, reflects in the film. Yeah, it reflects in the film. But the movie wasn't good. The, the remake wasn't good. It was no. awful. Although, um, what's his name? Uh, he, was he, he was great. He was great. Yeah. He was just the wrong Freddy at the wrong place. Yeah, like if he <laughs> if he had been given like an actual like you know what I mean. But he really brought to the character what it was. The movie's awful, That's nearly yeah. nearly nearly unwatchable it's and unbearable. Uh, I went to see it. I went, oh Jesus God, thank God. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Didn't, didn't, <laughs> all the director. I gotta tell you, I don't know who he is. Again, if you're listening, dude, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> rude, 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 rude to me in that audition. No reason. Uh, no, no reason reason for that not no no zero i don't accept it anymore i'm too old yeah I don't play. <laughs> good, good you shouldn't good yep all right second one what's the difference between thriller and horror i think probably one is more psychological than the other uh that would be my take on it um horror is all inclusive of many many different things slash agreed ladder um, uh, 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 Last Girl Standing. Thriller is Brooklyn Forty Five. Um, it 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 in a way, uh, or uh, The Haunting. Uh, with Julie Harris, one of my all-time favorite films. Um, it Thriller leaves more in the hands of the 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 audience to deduce and think and participate in than horror does. Horror presents it to you. Oh, I scared you now. Thriller is more, I think, you're kind of scaring yourself, aren't you, a little bit? A little bit. <laughs> Why? Why are you so scared? You're fine. Right. So that would be my take on it. I love that. I love that. That's yes. great. Fantastic answer. Yeah. Um, by, by the way, his name oh. was Samuel David Bear. Is it Dick? 
and uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, he has uh, directed only a few films, no. um, but he has, but he has directed. Uh, he directed Nirvana's uh, "Smells Like Teen Spirit" video. He directed Ozzy Osbourne's "Mama, I'm Coming Home," and about ten thousand other music videos. So that is uh, Hall clearly. Of- then here's who we want to direct a franchise. Yeah, 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 he's like, oh, yeah, exactly. He got like, a big head for doing smells like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Oh well, and also like, I mean, Michael Jackson's place with no name, Green Day stuff. Are you uh, on? Uh, are you on Pro right now? Yeah. Who's his agent? Um, <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Um, I just wanted, just uh, so while you're looking that up, Ryan, I think the funniest part about how shitty that movie is is that they took somebody like Jackie Earl Haley, who's an incredible <laughs> actor, mm-hmm. and they took something as iconic as Freddy's face, and they were like, you know what we should do? We should fuck that up with CGI. Like, that was the <laughs> worst thing. They were like, let's take one of the most iconic things about Freddy Krueger and let's make him look like a fucking turtle. What? The- like, it was the <laughs> weirdest it was thing. A turtle. What the hell is the thinking? I, I, yeah. I- I don't know. All right, third so you one. Don't know who's yet? I'll keep, I'll keep looking. I'm He'll sorry. I, yeah, I kind of be up at the top on the left. Yeah, hold on a second. Is, is, what is there... horror movie? Oh, you got it. No, go ahead. Keep going. All right. What horror movie influenced your taste the most? What horror movie? In, horror thriller? Can I include both? Sure. Sure. Horror movie influenced. That's weird because I want to say Easy Rider because in a way when I was a kid that was a horror movie to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I was a bit of a hippie. Um, <laughs> probably the haunting, as I mentioned. Um, awesome, Billy Harris, and or the Innocence, um, which is a brilliant, brilliant, terrifying movie. But they're subtle. I mean, I'm not. I'm not the kind of. I don't go for slap. I mean, I like it fine, but I, I, I would do it if anybody wants to hire me. I would totally do slasher and um, splatter, anything like that. I'll do any film if it's any good. But I prefer the ones that don't hand it to me, like I was saying earlier. I, I, I like to not know what's going on. I like to try and figure out, is this person crazy or are they really seeing these things? Um, it I, I just, just prefer that world. And I'm old school, so I would say probably those two old, old films that still have I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. I assume you've seen The Haunting, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The old, the original, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it would be something like that in that world. And, oh, um, also, God, what's the name of it? I'm so bad with names. Girl gets her head crashed when she's driving out the car. Hereditary? Oh, had hereditary. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hereditary. Hereditary. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oof. That I loved that. Um loved. Because there are unanswered questions. You know, it's not just, you know, Michael Myers with a knife. We know he's bad, he's coming scary. And those are great. They're really terrifying. Halloween. Oh, I was looking at my back seat every time I got in my goddamn car and then <laughs> came out and for years. Um, because it was terrifying. Yeah. But after a while, you're like, okay, I get it. You know, get stabbed on the wall, boop, and you're done. <laughs> and they're valid, and of course I've done two of them, but it it it's a different level of terror for me. It uh, the the slashers or the splatters won't keep me up at night. Right. The ones that do are the ones that get in you, and you don't know what the fuck's going on. I love that. Yeah. Um, um. His oh. his. Uh, his manager is David Unger, and his talent agents are ICM partners. They don't have a specific age. Okay, thanks. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, what a surprise. One of the top five. I'm shocked, I tell you. Shocked. <laughs> if you, you could erase one movie from existence, what would it be? And it doesn't have to be horror. Oh, my God. And oh. this is our most passed on. <laughs> What's that? Is your most what? Passed on. Passed on. People pass yeah. on it either because a lot of people just <laughs> hey, don't want really to do. What are y'all? Let me tell you what. Tell me what y'all's are, just so I know. Just so I have a point of reference. Uh, well, one of them might be a movie exactly that you is, go ahead. Uh, and one of them is a movie that you're actually in. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Uh, thank God. I am, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I am, I am um, very, very hard on the first two uh, Rob Zombie Halloween movies. So I uh, I did not enjoy them. And uh, I know that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> That's yeah. the, the, that's uh, they they weren't the direction I wanted the uh, the, the movie. I fully understand. Yes, so that was my um, answer. Yes, I've recently changed my. I originally said Scream just because I wanted to know the first, the, the original, chaos, the original, just because of the chaos effect. Because I, I think Scream say. was. I thought it changed the direction of of horror, sort of yes, mainstream horror. No question. So I kind of wanted to take that away just to imagine a, a chaos version but um i think lately i'm changing my mind to salt burn i was really I disappointed <laughs> i was i was a huge fan of, of and that still am a huge fan of promising young woman Ooh, and oh yeah i was right. a huge fan of like the directing and and the cinematography and everything it was great but just the overall story i mm -hmm. was so disappointed in interesting yeah, I've, so. I've read a couple different things about Saltbird. I'm anxious to see it. I'm waiting. It was I'm like people were like it's super so shocked. So it's like I haven't seen anything. Um, right. I'm sorry, what were you just saying? No, I'm just gonna say like people are like, oh my god, it's so shocking, and it's like, well, not for us. We we watch horror <laughs> right. all the time. Like you want shocking? <laughs> yeah. Come on, so yeah. Yeah. So oh. the fuck down, people. <laughs> They're so easily funny. shocked, most people. So. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's true. The one that I decided to remove from history was also a shocking movie, actually. It was I Spit on Your Grave. And really? the reason I decided that is because that entire subgenre of rape revenge films is actually one of my favorite subgenres, and that it can completely exist without that movie. And that movie specifically is so exploitative and gross. That it well, doesn't kind of first, wasn't it? It was. It was the first one. And all well, okay. So like people debate whether you can consider that one the first one or Last House on the Left. Last House on the Left was handled much better, even though yeah. it was still very crude. It was still very like grungy and gross and grimy and all those things. But it was handled so much better yeah. than I Spit on Your Grave was. And I Spit on Your Grave is also just it's like it's one of those movies that I've seen it more than once to kind of see if this is really like the way I think about it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's such an exploitative movie that doesn't need to exist. Like it just did for that subgenre to exist. So that one, I was like, fuck that movie. It can go away. And also apparently the director of it is real fucking gross. So it's just <laughs> like, nope, nope. Don't need to have it. They came, he, he came up with it with another guy in his truck when they were driving down a road and they uh -huh. saw a woman come out of the woods and then they created this whole thing in their head yeah. and like what a terrible thing to drive around and think about anyways but uh you know right. <laughs> yeah. they didn't stop and help her they <laughs> like let's just out of that let's yeah, just yeah. imagine seven rapes um yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> the most rapes yeah like, like... <laughs> i finally figured it out definitely not horror and it comes out of way left field and it probably says more about me than uh, uh the movie itself it's called angela's ashes Oh yeah, I went to see that with a new friend once. You know, we just kind of we met at like an improv workshop or fucking something. Well, let's go to a movie because I live near me, so we went up and we watched it. And the entire time, the entire fucking movie, we we're like, Jesus Christ, what the <laughs> fuck is this fucking movie? They're fucking Catholics. What the hell is going on with this bullshit? I was so fucking angry that he finally just had to. We had to leave. Yeah, it was. It really hit me in a visceral place that I didn't even know existed. That it was just like. Fuck all you people. I don't care anything about this bullshit. I want to get the hell out of here now. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe I'm wrong. I should maybe watch it again, but that's my movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah I've seen some garbage, garbage, but that's that's, my that's, movie. that's no, and I get it. And that's like not a fun movie to go like out with somebody. I like I I, I took I took I took a first date to see uh, uh when I was in high school to see kids. And I don't know if you've seen kids, but uh, <laughs> I thought we were like going to see a movie, an art movie the at the art yes. the skateboarders and kids, and like oh, I was hilarious. We were going to the we were going to the cool arty theater, and I was the cool guy and worldly and shit, and that's a <laughs> That's a quiet ride home. Oh um, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's just so hilarious. I went on a first day once with somebody for or to see ET in New York City. <laughs> right. And the entire time I had to stop myself from blubbering like an idiot 
<laughs> yeah, when he gets sick, man, I can't okay, we're good, we're good. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, uh, yeah. First day movies are pretty tough. I for a period of time in Seattle when I lived in Seattle, actually, uh, they were showing uh, midnight screenings of uh, Talking Heads. Um, Stop making sense. Thank you, God, Jesus, yep. what's with my head? Stop making sense. And I would literally take a date there to see if I ever wanted to meet with them again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Then, yeah. yeah, then you know, fuck off. Good luck. Have a you know. yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, all all right. right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Two more left. Are ghosts real? Oh, of course they are. Perfect. Well, of course, yeah, love question. It. I'm from the theater, dude. Uh, <laughs> I have, I have met mother. Theaters. My mother was a bit of a sensitive, and she would contact them, and I still speak with them every time. Every time. Uh, I love it. Yeah, there's no question in my mind. Fuck yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I love that. Um, all right, last one. And I think I may know where this is going, but who knows? <laughs> uh, Midsommar or Hereditary? Oh. <laughs> How very interesting. You got to split the baby, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Should um, I start throwing in Bo is Afraid, too? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That'll yeah, fuck you. Being, that will throw people off. They're just being the mean, dude. Right. <laughs> um, honestly, I think I might go with Midsummer. Yeah. I'm a Midsummer guy. Yeah. Primarily <laughs> because probably of the, the design. Um, yep. Beautiful design. Um, so cool. My incredible obsession with cults. Yep. Uh, <laughs> cult guy, like you would not believe. Um, and uh, uh, Pew, and because of yeah. her, uh, yeah, that was one of the most amazing performances I've seen. And the twist was so satisfying, yeah. And um, is it wrong to say orgasmic? I mean, yeah, yeah sure, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like, they're yeah. like, holy fuck, that was really quite a thing. And uh, yeah, I, I really loved that film, Hereditary amazed me, yeah, um, amazed me. Absolutely. It lost me that much at the end. Midsummer did not. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Midsummer. It's usually the tipping point is the ending for yeah. like one way or the other. It's like that's usually what the tipping point is. I, I, I'm one of the one of the people who kind of enjoyed because because I like uh, like you like cult stuff. I like Satan stuff and right. demon so worshiping. Yeah. Yeah, so and so I enjoy all of that. So like we're all into satanic cults. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. But, but, start but, one. Let's start, yeah. start one. That's we'll the start, money is. We'll start yeah. one in, right here, right now. Um <laughs> you didn't um, know this, Ezra, but you're the fourth host now. Like this is just what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm all three Z's are the new three sixes. <laughs> I'm sorry, what am I getting paid for this gig? <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, um but, oh, but well, so well. The, so the ending <laughs> so the ending sort of summed it all up and i just thought it was a cool like like i liked i liked it because i you know i watch a lot a lot of horror and it's a lot of it's like it's a town with a with a dark secret it's a house that was site of a murder or like hangings of witches or, and all this instead the the spirit was something different like this bigger plan and mm -hmm. like the the transcendentness to like the, yeah. the i i like from the writing story point of view i enjoyed that sort of fresh take that makes sense on the whole on the whole thing you know what I mean? And like, and then like, like, you know, uh, you know, nude, nude, uh, nude, nude people, you know, uh, but uh, no, it was, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but no, it was Three a house full of naked cult members. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. But, uh, but just That's the my next film, in fact. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> but the floating, <laughs> but the floating up and they're all and to, to pay men and all that. So I, I dig on that sort of stuff. I'm kind of yeah. a geek on that sort of, you know, some people like, yeah, you know, elf lore. Well, or that whatever. makes an interesting point to me. I'm um, so writing. If you separate the departments, writing probably hereditary. Yeah, uh, visuals midsummer. Yep. Yeah, um, okay. That's interesting. That's a good split. How much you think of the witch? I love loved it. Loved it. Yeah, me too. I eventually yeah. came around and loved it. Did so. you? I don't really yeah. like anything mm -hmm. else he's done, actually. But I really like. The yeah, what else has he done? You have to remind me. He did the lighthouse. The lighthouse. The lighthouse. I didn't see. I, it. I appreciated it, but I I didn't. I love Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, me too. You could put you could put him in anything, anything. and it's and, and it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, Willem Dafoe did fantastic. The rest of the movie was just it was it was very much like super super fucking artsy, which is cool. 
but like for a while yeah, yeah. it's kind of one of those ones where by the time the year end at the end of it you're like all right well that was a cool willem dafoe movie let's get the fuck out of here <laughs> right <laughs> I, just, I am like, super looking forward to uh, I, what are we doing now too. say that again yeah Nosferatu, Nosferatu his, his next movie. movie. Oh, I'm very much okay. looking forward to that because I think he might do something very cool with that, especially yeah, very, in very, his style. Willem Dafoe. I mean, he, I kind of pattern myself a little bit after him because sure. the 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 movies he makes. I mean, I mean, with uh, 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 the current one, uh, Pretty Things. What's it called? Yeah, yeah, Pretty Things. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Pretty Things. Yep. yep. Um, yep. he 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 takes such fucking risks. Mm -hmm. He's willing to go to play. Talk about a character actor. Yeah, He's willing to go to places that nobody else will go, and he doesn't give two fucks, as far as I can gather, of the box office, of the reputation, mm -hmm. of this or the that. He's just a brilliant actor doing brilliant shit, and so I'm I'm pulled to go there. Um, so, you know, like I I listened to his interview on the Smartless podcast, and mm -hmm. he is really just a really amazing he like you know he lives in italy and you know, with his wife and he farms and he just does jobs and they ask him what his take on acting he's like i just show up and just try to do what the director tells me like it's not <laughs> not very complicated like it's kind of like what you me to do. it was kind of yeah. like what you were saying earlier yeah. with is like which is always funny to me because it's funny when people are very good at something and they're like oh this is i uh, one of my friends who's a tattooer is very good at it he he's always like yeah you know you just learn a couple tricks and you did it and i'm like eh, that's not what's happening but yeah. that's <laughs> but i but i but i appreciate that um but willem defoe i mean it was like he's so like nonchalant about it and like such a good guy about the whole process and i think like and i can see you modeling yourself you both have like you know like 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 a face that has like energy and an umph to it you know what i mean and you both bring that sort of thing to it and uh it's uh, the that, thing that books me and it's the thing that stops me from booking sure and but it's uh but like you like if you need that face, you got that. You know what I'm saying? Like you, like, and that's a. Uh, uh, we had a uh, Naomi Grossman on the show once. Is also oh, there, I'm loved it. She lives across the street from. Oh, me. cool. Yeah, she was on. <laughs> a, yeah, she's she awesome. was. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, and she was talking about the same sort of thing because she's a real presence actor with oh, yeah. a specific look. And uh, we we had her on with the director of uh, One Bedroom, which is a movie we we like a lot, a lot as well. And um, um, and she was like saying kind of the same thing. It's like it can be hard. You know. What I mean, especially like coming in when you're first starting because people either want you or don't want you at all, you know, for like easy background stuff, you don't want, you know what I mean? People with this or that. And, uh, and I always think that's just kind of an interesting, uh, take, but, um, have you seen Amy's fashion shots on her Facebook? No. Uh, yes, I have. It, yes, I have. Gorgeous. Yeah, oh, she yeah. is. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And, and like really cool. Oh, like she's yeah, she yeah, she is like yeah like like i le we left that thing and you know like i left there being like i wish i was like her best friend like i wish that like <laughs> wish she was like calling me to go like play frisbee or what i don't i don't yeah, know I, I, I don't really know what friends do but um you know I, I mean, <laughs> But I, I'm guessing frisbee, <laughs> frisbee sometimes is that a thing? In Hollywood, um, just so you know, what friends do in Hollywood, they undermine each other. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's a that's that's a <laughs> yes yeah, comic uh, scene. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. yeah the, um, well, the comic scene just complains about each other, but um, but it's uh, um, um, yeah, but they do it in a funny way. So yeah, they yeah they're, 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 they're all real hilarious. Um, but it's just, um, yeah, it's oh, really, I'm smelling some issues. <laughs> yeah, oh, you know, problems uh, in comedy. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> problems in Hollywood. What? Um, all it, it this way, guys. We're all fucking broken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like we all need all to broken be, toys. You know, like one of my lines is like, I host a podcast. Because uh, of course I do. Uh, you know what I mean? My kids can just like, what else am I gonna do? Um, you are you are absolutely fantastic. Let's do some um, let's do some um, Rex, re recommendations. Recommendations, Graham. You want to start? Yeah, sure. I got one. I'm gonna wait on one of them till it comes around on you, and then I'll jump on yours. But uh, first, we got. Uh, I'm late on this. Super late. But Molly finally convinced me to watch Severance, and I love it. Oh yeah. And uh, so it's Adam so Scott is it's great. So good. I, it's taken me a little while because I'm like, is this it? Were we just in an office and blah, blah, blah. But like, I, like it took me a while. Now I'm fully in. I think what helped was uh, the, uh, um, oh, now I can't think of his name, but John Turturro and what's his name? They have the, what? Christopher Walken have a relationship. Oh, yeah. 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 oh my God, isn't that great? Oh, it's so great. Fucking awesome. And yeah. those two like powerhouses 
doing like this side like sort of subplot which it's is heartbreaking absolutely amazing i love it so much um the other thing is um the new alkaline trio is coming out in like three weeks i am so excited the the it's called um blood sweat and something i, I i'm wrong uh but uh <laughs> I figure it's the new it's coming out soon it's alkaline trio you know what they sound like they sing about dark stuff in very pop and darky punk way um i love them uh i think their last album that came out five years ago was one of their best it was called uh, is this thing cursed it was much better than the one before that which i still also love because it's alkaline trio i've got the big oh no oh yeah right there it's alkaline trio but um the new album they've got two videos out they're both rad Check out Alkaline Trio. Get excited for Alkaline Trio again. Jonas? Fuck yeah. Um, so physical media, I'm going to recommend this because Best Buy stopped carrying physical media, so get this motherfucker while you still can. Uh, that is the Cabin in the Woods 4K Steelbook. It Yo, fucking... It's sliding out. <laughs> yep, it's supposed to. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, it's the 4K Steelbook, Cabin in the Woods, fantastic movie. Most of you have already seen it. If you haven't seen it, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Go see it immediately. Um, but the Steelbook is awesome. Like, the artwork on it is fantastic. So that's what I'd recommend for anybody that's getting physical media. Um, Best Ooh. Buy has still their physical media, like, 4K oh. exclusive Steelbooks. Fucking go get them now while you can, because once they're gone they're gone and then people are going to sell them for like crazy amounts of money on ebay um so get them while you still can uh streaming go on to screen box and watch the barn and the barn 2 uh, both... i watched the barn getting ready for the barn 2 yeah, actually. Dude. i haven't seen the barn 2 yet they're both awesome they're both like super cheesy and fun and full of practical effects and gory as shit and practical please more practical so more much practical of... yes and this right? they're both 100%. they're both fantastic um i mean they're they're absolute b movies and a half and they're the best kind <laughs> so uh watch both of those uh music uh i haven't been listening to anything like recently but i am going to recommend my roommate slash awesome artist slash musician his new ep is coming out and it's called it's uh his band is called doggo doggo great yeah. name yeah yeah and the ep is called funeral for a pet and it fucking rules <laughs> and you're gonna hear he's, some he's got stuff. a rad a rad logo with the dog fido it's yeah. punk dog so yeah. rad uh, it's gonna be awesome I've, i got to hear the ep it is awesome yeah I'm you'll hear a little bit a little it. bit of his music on some of our stuff so yep. uh yeah that rules um and you should also just look him up his name is freddie heineman he fucking rules uh he look up his band and he's also going to be doing an episode of the grindhouse with me and we're going to cover the sadness so that's coming out soon Ooh. uh he watched that for the first time and whoa oh boy uh, <laughs> he's got was, stuff to say i'm sure he has got some things to talk about and he also watched <laughs> it with his friend who has never watched extreme horror before and he decided to go ahead and use that one as the first one to have her watch and the, whatever her, her <laughs> medical bills or her mental health bills are on him not me so <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's what i got nice ryan ryan um two things first uh please 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 if you haven't checked out satanic hispanics um th th yes. that movie please check it out it is an anthology film with uh um uh, uh Gigi saw guerrero who friend of the show came on just one of our favorite uh favorite uh current directors uh, uh daniel uh, uh rugna who did uh when evil uh, damien 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 rugna. Damien, damien rugna why am i so stupid why when when does this <laughs> happen american nah, man, yeah. the Northwest. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it clouds my head <laughs> anyways um it is it is it is super fun it is super it's... bloody it is it is as good as you want it it's better than you uh, it i don't want to say any right to be because they are all absolutely fantastic directors and yeah. things like that yeah. but it's all they all uh, knocked it out of the park all knocked it out of the park the Taking wrap shots at creep shows and vhs's worldwide right yeah and like and the, the wraparound story stars uh, so uh, good. uh pedro from uh napoleon dynamite and he's Ramirez, yeah yeah, and, yeah and he is absolutely fantastic in it and uh, the whole thing is just uh is just really fantastic um it's available on blue way i think it's on video on demand too 
I just bought the I just bought the Blu-ray because me too because I just uh, I don't I'm not like Jonas I don't buy a lot of physical media but like support physical media support physical (laughs) media yeah you know what I mean so I did that and that was good Um, and then on uh, the the big uh, my big announcement personally uh, for Portland on the 21st um, uh, I and another uh, Jaron George who's another uh, comedian friend of mine we will be comedically opening up for uh dr cornell west on, yes. uh, on his so stop, cool. in, uh, stop in portland um with a, a no. good good friend a good friend of mine hip-hop artist uh, mike crenshaw who's, uh, we, we him and i hosted a, a public radio show through the pandemic and uh and then uh, portugal the man the band will be also playing there um yeah. so so it's going to be quite a um yeah that's i, I feel way more special than i am you don't talk about imposter Fucking syndrome awesome. you're like i'm gonna show up and be like oh hey here's my little jokes um, <laughs> uh, um but uh but but no i'm really excited to work with uh cornell west and uh and uh just uh listen to what the guy has to say and uh and and, and you know so that's uh that's that's the big news in my uh in my neck of the woods mr buzzington can you please take sure. us sure yeah um taking a far left turn. quick question <laughs> uh, do any of you ever play la i mean so you know, you know what's funny is LA is actually kind of challenging to actually play. I was in that area. We ended up doing a show in Santa Barbara, mm-hmm. but we could not line up shows in LA. There aren't a lot of like active. The, the bounce back from the pandemic has not been great for LA proper. There are in the surrounding areas shows, but there aren't as many in LA proper. Yeah, interestingly enough, a friend of mine who used to do stand up, he's from the East Coast as well. He lived here for a while. Now he's back on the East Coast. Because the venues here apparently wouldn't pay in the same way that they did on the East Coast. Right. So it's more like showcase, showcase, showcase. And like, you can only do that for so fucking long. Yeah. There's been a lot of changes with the stand up scene. Like, I'm performing there in March. In LA? Yeah, I'm going to be performing in LA because I'm. So I'm doing a comedy festival at the end of March called the, it's the Napa Valley Comedy Festival. Okay. So I'm going to be in Napa Valley to do that. And then I'm also going to be spending an extra week in Los Angeles proper okay. because I like I have friends and stuff. So I'm going to be staying with them. And so I'm going to do a round of shows there. Yeah, um, okay, well, please let me know when you do. Because I would oh, absolutely. watch. It would be a kick. I've got to tell you, man, Napa Valley, that ain't nowhere fucking near LA. No, so, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Uh, it's like great everybody thinks california is this big it's like fucking huge no yeah, yeah. we're talking like you know the size of montana distance that i would have trouble seeing for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like well, please let me know if any of you are ever in la i'd love it because this has been a blast you guys kill me You're no fire. you fucking rule man I'm you rule. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as recommendations go um i'm gonna take a far left turn well first of all anything i've ever done Yes, sir. <laughs> 100%. Yes. Mm-hmm. Including the crap. <laughs> the second thing, um, I'm I'm a huge I want to say fan, but that basically is what it is, a fan of true crime. I'm mm-hmm. like yeah. crazy about that. It's like investigation discovery is on TV is what I watch endlessly. I mm-hmm. mean, wives with knives, how fabulous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> it's a thing. That I kind of devour. So something I recently watched. Are you guys familiar with the case of a, a young girl named Natalia Chase? Oh yeah. Oh Natalia yeah. Grace. Yeah. Grace. Yeah. Grace. Yeah. Grace. Yeah. 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 Grace. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I knew I had it, but then I didn't. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a thing that they recently ran, which I just happened to watch. I binged the entire Natalia speaks. Yeah. What actually happened with that bullshit? And it is fascinating yes yeah. poor kid man eight years old thrown into an apartment because the parents imagined and they wanted to get rid of her and so they made up all these fucking stories about her it's like it's, it's really a horrifying they chat. aged her 12 years they made yeah. when she was nine she was 22 legally and they just That's what left they were her they, they literally just changed left her, her in an apartment complex where she just only knew how to be a child. Yeah, she was like fucking nice. Insane. And now, but now I just saw the end, the last episode of season two because it's a series. Yeah, Natalia. But speaks. Now the people who actually <laughs> adopted her and love her and uh, she's great. She's one of their little religious for my taste. But whatever. Uh, agreed. <laughs> now they're like they're teasing it like this bitch is crazy. Get her out of my house. <laughs> 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 Highly recommend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Natalia speaks uh, the true story of of, uh, of Natalia Grace. Um, 
that. But there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, podcast. You were talking about podcast. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've heard. I was, that's why I was looking away for a minute because I was looking at my phone because I have 10,000 podcasts. It's all I ever fucking listen to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I literally sleep with them at night. Mm-hmm. You're uh, our favorite this, person. Like, what's that? <laughs> you're our you're favorite, our favorite person. Yeah, we, we want everybody to be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. sleep with them. This is called the Rialto Report. Hmm. Okay. okay. All right, New Yorkers, buckle up. All right. This is a guy. He he does it anonym or uh, yeah anonymously. He and nobody knows his real name. He lives in New York. He's British, um, and he and his female partner investigate and examine and interview everybody from 1970s porn world. Oh shit! Oh, it's interesting. Film scene, and that's when I was in New York. I mean, I'm not kidding you when I said I was in New York City when it was taxi driver time. You were here when like 42nd Street was fucking 42nd Street. Like, exactly. <laughs> all right, exactly. yeah. the places Christy I worked in Times Square. Oh, honey, the stories I got. Uh, <laughs> the places I worked there as a struggling whatever. Yeah, um, were illuminating, and the fact that this particular person approaches it as a lost art. Um, is valid and informative and wonderful. I have many, many friends who work in the adult industry. Um, and Same, I like actually. I have, I have quite a few. Oh, my God. They're the best people on the planet. Absolutely. Um, one thing that Paul Thomas Anderson did and did well was, um, uh, what was it called? Um, Boogie Nights. Yes, Boogie Nights. Mm-hmm. He nailed it. Absolutely mm-hmm. nailed the world. Um, in my opinion. And so I would highly recommend the Rialto report there. No ads. He doesn't take any money for it. This dude just wants to get a history down about what that world was like and why and when and with whom and how. And it's fascinating. I uh, highly recommend the Rialto report. Cool. Uh, cast available wherever the fucking you get podcast. I don't fucking know. Right. Yeah. I'm looking at this right now. It's, it's great, got man. some really cool. Yeah, it's, it's uh, also, yeah. There, there's also a site. Ginger Lynn. I was yeah. Oh that's yeah, Ginger Lynn. That's yeah, right. really interesting. Really interesting. But yeah, all, that, they cover everything. That's awesome. That's uh, I'll say, I'll recommend one to you if you like true crime. I, I would it. I would recommend recommend true crime bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, oh yeah, I've I've I've, I've done that a couple times. Yeah, yeah he, he's he's great because I mean his the you know it starts out it's all about Israel Keys and it starts out yeah. the first things is just kind of like oh here's the story of him and here's like the thing by season four mm-hmm. he's got like divers out in lakes he's got like looking for bodies and stuff it's it's really incredible That's- and it's re- it's really it's really like it goes beyond journalism it goes it into does. like actual like activism you know what i mean and like and like trying to find homes for you know trying to find people who are missing and stuff like that and it's uh it's really uh it's really fascinating and it's like and uh and it's done with a very i i, I mean i'm a last podcast guy because i'm a oh i love last podcast because I'm a, a comedian and therefore kind of a monster, you know what I mean? Like, and not that last <laughs> podcast isn't sensitive to the crimes, but like I enjoy laughing along with it. But uh, Josh Hallmark, they're smart. They're yeah, really oh, smart. Yeah, yeah. They're wicked smart. You know what I mean? And Marcus, who runs that, is is oh, Marcus, very yes. very well read and very like, and everything is 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 very well put together and fascinating. But Josh Hallmark's uh, approach to it is through a lot of empathy and compassion for humans, and it's a really uh, a pleasant uh, pleasant way to hear about really one of the world's most awful human. Yeah, beings. I'll download that again because I heard a couple samples. Yep. And I really liked it, but then I think it fell off my radar. But yeah. I remember I really, really, really liked it. Now, last podcast, the third host, um, I can't think of his name. Ben Kissel. Ben Kissel. He has uh, moved on. Ben has moved on to uh, to figure out his life, which, which which I believe was a very good choice. Uh, and and, and, and they have Ed Larson it, in there now. And Ed yeah, Larson. Who, who, was, uh, is, 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 is he okay physically? I mean, it sounded like there was something physically going on. Uh, well, he, okay. um, uh, he, his, he, he, his he, ex-girlfriend, he, he, his ex-girlfriend he came out. some bad stuff. His ex-girlfriend sorry, came what? out. That, his ex-girlfriend came out that he was abusive. So, uh, drinking and abusive. So he has now been in, in rehab and trying wow. to get, trying to get his. Uh, damn. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and I fit. I, I have. have I have one uh, podcast to share with all of you, and it's true crime. Oh, okay. But it's the funniest true crime I've ever. It's called Who Shat on the Floor at My Wedding? 
Yeah, and it's, I've, heard, I've heard it. Yeah. It's two Kiwi women <laughs> trying to figure out. They have a list of suspects because it was on a boat. So it's an enclosed, like they have all the, the possible, they call them poopetrators. Uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a poo cast. It's fucking wonderful. It's like, and it's hysterical. Who shot at my wedding is what it's called? Who yep. shot on the floor at my wedding? Yeah. Oh, totally. Look and at it's, that and it's the bride and her friend. And it's awesome. Oh, it's that's so hilarious. Funny. What a genius idea! Yeah, this, yeah. Do they this, figure it out? Do they do they get? There? I haven't finished it. What? <laughs> I haven't finished it. I oh, okay. just started. It's You'll find the shitter eventually. Like. They will. They'll find the shitter. <laughs> yeah, they they're to. they're gonna figure it out. I, I oh my god, confidence. Genius. Ezra, <laughs> Ezra, as a true crime fan, you might get a kick of this trick that I play on people. Sometimes people will ask me for a movie suggestion that will fuck them up. <laughs> and it's because I always watch I watch a lot of extreme horror. Yeah. And I always ask them, do you want your day fucked up, your week fucked up, your month fucked up? Nice. And if they get real cocky about it and they're like, I want my month fucked up, then I tell them to go watch Dear Zachary. And then they come back to me and they go, You motherfucker. <laughs> Dear Zachary <laughs> is not a horror film, but it is. Uh mm -hmm. it's a documentary and it's one of the most fucked up true crime documentaries that I've ever Where seen. Where do I hear it? Where do I see it? The movie. Uh, where is it now? I'll look it up. I think it's I can uh, find it. Netflix. I think. Okay, I got that. It might be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dear Zachary, or right, I'm writing all this shit down. Oh, uh, Ezra, you are absolutely fantastic. And so are you guys, coolest. man. You're hilarious. Thank you so much for for joining us. We I, seriously, I could. It's on keep... Tubi. It's on Sorry. TV. Okay. Oh, um, TV all right. um, we we could talk to you for hours about all these. Yeah, things. Oh, nice, we, we didn't even we didn't even really dive into the Fablemans. We didn't dive into like you've you've just done uh, so much great work, and uh, you're so part of the landscape. And uh, that's it's so awesome to to, to it's talk such about an the, honor. Yeah, that means it really is. And uh, you know, and getting to know you a little bit, and especially through the strike and and everything, you are uh, you are a really solid uh, human being on top of it all. And uh, and thank you for uh, for for everything you've done. So now we got another one maybe coming up. Keep in mind, IATSE is uh, about to go into negotiations. Yeah, Ooh. that's the union Teamsters IATSE. They're the union that covers pretty much everything below the line. Um, so they're they supported SAG and the writers like you wouldn't believe. Right. And they didn't have to, but they did. And so we have to make goddamn fucking sure that when their contract comes up, I think it's this June, uh, that we back them in the same way that they backed us. Otherwise, fuck off. Right. Yeah. It's like we need well, we don't just need them, uh, we are them. Right. So it's it's very, very important that we support them in their struggle. It's all it's all the same Absolutely. thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, and, yeah. and the more the more the world sees it like that, the better off we are. You know what I mean? Like there is the, the hierarchy ideal of like I do this, then you we're job creators and all this. It's like, no, we make you money. Yeah. You know what I mean? The burger yeah, flipper, yeah. why do why do burger flippers want twenty dollars an hour? And I'm like, because you go to a burger flipping place to eat a burger. So the burger, the person flipping the burger is the one making the money, right? Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like that's just all there is to it. Like at the end exactly. of the day, you're the money maker. And uh and you know what I mean? And it, whether you drive a truck or whether you're Tom Cruise, you're uh you are um and you, like Tom Cruise doesn't you don't see Tom Cruise movies without people driving trucks. And that's all <laughs> that he, Tom Cruise knows that. I mean he he's been very supportive of the entire thing. I'm so, I'm sure he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, apparently. So it's like, yeah, I'm not a huge fan, but whatever, he's good. He does what he does, and he's right. Tom Cruise, and he's a good actor, and Magnolia he was fucking brilliant. Yeah. Um so, yeah, you were in what that. you're saying about the minimum <laughs> wage workers actually also applies to the fact that <sighs> I shouldn't have done this. I posted a thing on <laughs> Facebook, kind of bitching about the fact that I'm saying nothing but memes of Paul Giamatti at In N Out Burger with his fucking Golden Globe sitting there with his tuxedo alone eating his hamburger. I'm like, this feels fake to me. Sure. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Hillary right. Frank did it five, six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, Patton Oswalt, who's a genius, did it like four years ago. Right. Right. I came up with something original. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You can only ride on the uh, uh, I don't drink Merlot line for so long. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your mouth the God's ears. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Ezra, uh, you're you so guys are great. Uh, congratulations great. on all your success. Thank it, you very much. Great what you do. Thank and, you very much. Um, thank you for doing it. I, and, and we really... Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, and thanks to everybody worldwide for listening. Uh, United Kingdom coming in. We'll, we'll make this short. United Kingdom coming in second after the United States. Uh, solidly in second place, actually continuing to grow. So thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Scotland and Wales um, mm-hmm. and, and and England, you know. Um, Canada, <laughs> Canada, you're solidly in third place. New Zealand, uh, New Zealand in fourth place. Doing so on, good. Man. New Zealand killing it. <laughs> I remember that's where, the, who shot who shot the floor. Yeah, it's from yeah, New yeah. Zealand. Yeah, it's New Zealand doing so great. You know, I, I remember not too long ago when you all were behind Australia, and now you are two countries ahead of Australia. Nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> Ger- Germany, Germany, you're still you're still riding it. Australia after that, Sweden, Turks and Caicos Islands still knocking it out of the park, and India. <laughs> that's so weird to me. Yeah, I, yeah, Turks and Caicos Islands. We're we're the biggest. <laughs> I I'd have to say we're the biggest podcast. <laughs> on Turks and Caicos Islands. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. uh, um, <laughs> I- India, Mexico, Poland, Netherlands, France, Puerto Rico, Brazil, Spain, and the Czech Republic, and then Ireland wrapping off the top. Um, Ireland is last? Well, no, I mean, no, we have, we go way... I, I could just sit here the whole day, and we... There's probably, we, like, some dude in the Falkland Islands that fucking listens to us. <laughs> right, we, like... we, 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 have an, we have an amazing global global platform. Horror is such a such a national... But we have Serbian, I Iran, Jamaica, Hong Kong, Barbados, Gibraltar, Bulgaria, uh, all oh. listening, uh, weekly listening. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. It, it's uh, it's uh, it makes my heart. I, I feel bad that my bullshit is spreading further. But um, thank you all for <laughs> for tuning in. Uh, we have a Patreon, um, Army of the Goddamned. Um, they're fantastic. You want to read them off real quick, Ram? Yes, I do. And what we're only doing we're doing now. first names on this. Yeah, yeah, just do it quick. Michael, Drew, Stephanie, Katie, Chris, Alan, Bacon Bits, Angela, Jasmine, Jason, Jake, Mom, Ron, Kristen, Manny, Coleman, Ryan, Jared, Michelle, and Brandon. I we know, love, man. We love you. Ezra, Ezra, <laughs> Bacon Bits is a cat, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Should be. So uh, <laughs> please, go, please go check out our Patreon. We love you all so much. Thank you all for supporting us. Um, go watch everything Ezra Buzzington has done. Hey, and if you're struggling, well, if you're struggling, please reach out to us. Uh, we are always available. Yeah. Um, we all need to do this together. Take care of yourself. Uh, uh, we love you. And uh, until we see you next time, um, can you please go uh, start some fires and break some glass. Thank you. Nice.